This is a HeadGum Podcast. The most important people in my life are my cats, Wally and Irma, and they're dining like a king and queen, except they're not doing anything together, thanks to our next sponsor, Smalls. If you are a listener of this show, you know that Mitch's cats cannot live without Smalls. Smalls cat food is protein-packed and made with preservative-free ingredients you'd find in your fridge, and it's delivered right to your door. Do you remember how stinky and smelly my old cat food was, Wags? Yeah. I used to leave the house smelling like cat food. I come into the studio and you say, ugh, something smells like cat food. I'd say, it's me. You remember that? Yeah, I would. I'd make, and then I'd have to take you out back and hose you off. You guys remember those episodes where I was just I was just soaking wet? <laughs> the, the wet Mitch run? I mean, those are good episodes. Well, guess what, Wags? I can finally open up a packet of cat food and not get nauseous. I actually recognize the ingredients in a packet of Smalls food. Smalls was started back in 2017 by a couple of guys home cooking cat food in small batches for their friends. A few short years later, they've served millions of meals to hundreds of thousands of cats around the world. After making the switch to Smalls, cat owners are seeing some big improvements in their cats. 78% of cat owners reported their cats had shinier and softer fur, and 90% reported overall health improvements. That includes Wally and Irma. Wow. They're so shiny now, they slip right through my hands. You know, Wally and Irma report 100% being adorable. You know I like that. This The team at Smalls is so confident your cat will love their product that you can try it risk-free. That means they will refund you if your cat won't eat their food. And one last time, Wally and Irma are not kissing and they're not in love like a king and queen. They're brother and sister, but they still love each other in the brother and sister way. Yeah, not like a brother and sister uh, in like Game of Thrones either. No, not at all. That doesn't happen. Again, that's like a king and queen royalty thing. Yeah. Put that out of your head. Get that out of your head, you freaks. Smalls is the food I give to my cats. So if you want to give it a try, head to smalls.com slash doughboys and use promo code doughboys at checkout for 50% off your first order, plus free shipping. That's the best offer you'll find, but you have to use our code DOUGHBOYS. Hey, buddy, it's Weiger. And Mitch. Wags, I'll be honest with you, I'm mad. Mitch is mad. I am mad. Look, today, the day we're recording this and the day this releases, for me, it's supposed to be a day of celebration. Mm. But because of Bar Mitzvah? (laughs) I was going to a bar mitzvah that got canceled. Oh, man. But because of the AMPTP and the studio's greed, I can't celebrate. I can't even talk yeah. a- about what I'm talking about, what I want to talk about. Right. Because these studios are treating us so unfairly. It's true. That we were forced into a situation where we have to, we have to go on strike. That's right. sag after is on strike. Mm-hmm. WGA continues our strike. Mm-hmm. And as part of sag after strike, there is no promotion of current and existing projects, mm-hmm. which is certainly ties into uh, to what's going on with you and what what's going on with the, this week's guest. And I'll say this. I'll say that. I'll say why it sucks. I've written some thoughts down, of course, but because I'm not... Uh, I'm not a great off the top of my dome speaker Don't like you. Say that you can do that. You I can, can riff. I can, I can I can riff, but but I I wanted to collect my thoughts a little bit. It sucks because for you know for a working actor, you, at this point they do just they they expect you to to promote your your own work, which 100%. is crazy. And it's helpful for you. You're like that's how you get jobs. You promote something. You hope people see it, and you hope to get into. Another job, you know, either you know, that project gets picked up and you mm-hmm. get more work that way, mm-hmm. or people see that project and that leads to more opportunities. Yeah, and I can't, I can't mention anything. It's depressing, and it's because of the studios. Yes, it's because of the way this they mistreated us, and they've done it for years. I think you, I mean, you and I have talked about it forever. Oh yeah, we made fun of Funny or Die, bad company. Yes. We've made fun of plenty of companies that have changed. I mean, look, they're in the long line of evil. I'm not saying they're the most evil, but there's a lot of there's a lot of companies that underpaid writers and actors 100%. and put us in this position that we're in now. And it's fucking sucks, Wags. It sucks to it, it's it's really hard to get work in this industry and it's really hard to get treated well. You get treated like trash constantly. And it's a depressing week for me because it is something where you're, when you finally make it up that mountain, you want to you want to celebrate. You want to you know, sometimes they begrudgingly treat you well. Studios yes. begrudgingly treat you well. And when I say that, I don't even mean that they treat you well. It will be a thing of like, hey, there's a premiere. Hey, can I get a ticket for, you know, my mom and sister? Uh, we'll see about it. Or, hey, can I get a plus one? And we'll see about it. Uh, am I invited? No, you're not invited. I mean, like, that's things that <laughs> yes, happen yeah. all the time. And me complaining about that as an actor, it's something that, 
I mean, they just say fuck the crew straight out. They don't 100%, care yes. about the crew. Yeah. So just to make it clear, like, oh, boo hoo, woe is me. I'm not trying to say that. I'm saying that's just the, the way the way they. And then you get to these fucking things, and there's these fucking dipshit content creators there, and you're like, I had to beg someone who's a part of this project who worked to make this a thing. Yeah. And you have to you have to beg because they don't care. They treat you like trash on every fucking level. Right. And that's just the way it goes. It's a total disrespect for mm-hmm. performers and it's most seen in the compensation. Mm-hmm. It's most seen in how, you know, poorly uh, writers and actors, but also, you know, c- crew, basically everyone who works on something these days is compensated relative to years past. Mm-hmm. But what you just hit on, you hit on something where it's like, it's tough to find work, but it's always been tough to find work in this industry. It's always been like a challenge. Like that's part of, yes. part of your job is of trying course. to get, trying to book something. The thing is in years past before streaming kind of completely dropped the bottom out of the, this, uh, the economy here, when you booked work, you could pay, you could pay your bills. You could sustain yes. yourself. You're 100%. like, you know what? I booked this thing. I booked these few guest spots. I can string, you know, I booked this writing job. Uh, I can I can use this to make my year. And yeah. that's not the case anymore. The job you book you book for those weeks helps you make those weeks, and that's it. A hundred percent. I mean, look, it's it's we all live in the gig economy now. It happens to every. It's it's happened to every in basically every field. It sucks, except mm-hmm. for the fields where people are making a lot of money basically where people have to get other jobs. You know, there's people who I'm a janitor and I'm also an Uber driver. It's fucking yes, right. horrible. And I know that look acting and writing it's cushy there. That's cushier work than a lot of blue collar work. I'm not, I'm not saying that that's not the case. Maybe harder than most blue collar work, <laughs> but it's a, it's about uh, people are not getting compensated in the way that they should. Be. It's true. That's He's... the issue. And also just you know, there was a thing on online today that was like, I feel bad for Mitch. And I'm not trying to make people feel bad for me. I don't yeah. give a shit. But someone was like, "He's hey, a don't ri- feel bad for this fucking guy. <laughs> feel bad for this dipshit. Give me a break. Someone was like, someone posted, he's a rich actor. Don't feel bad for him. And I want to say, I, I we've said it multiple times. We're blessed to have a podcast that pays us well. I have never, ever in my entertainment career, besides maybe a sketch project I worked on, ever been paid well at all, especially with the streaming networks. I've never made – Yeah. I've never made, made money to like pay my rent in California and be able to live. And when you book stuff like – you know, like you book a role and, you know, say like a streaming network on a show, you probably think like, hey, you're good to go. And it's like I don't think that people understand – the level they they try to have actors be guest stars. They're like actively trying to fuck them over. They're they're trying to give them the least amount of money that they can. And just and to, residuals are gone too. Yeah. And that used to be a thing that you would work on a project. It's very hard to book something. Hey, I book something. I feel good. And I I've said this before. I do pretty well as far as that goes. I book things. I'm not trying to be like I book everything. I don't. There's sometimes I don't work for a year. Uh-huh. But it used to be okay because you'd work and then you'd get residuals that paid you properly. And that doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, and that's true for all sides of the industry. What are, you just touch just to talk to talk about one thing you mentioned, and just yeah. to drill that down, which is like you mentioned, like they're tre- they're they're bo- they're hiring actors for as like you know for guest spots, yes, as opposed to what that means is that if you're if it's a guest role, that's a lower rate than if you're like mm-hmm. a series regular or recurring, right? Yes, and th- so these are basically roles where it's like you functionally are a series regular. You functionally are recurring. I don't mean you specifically, but I mean the person who's hired in the situation. If you're someone who's in seven out of ten episodes in a run, you're someone who's effectively a series regular, but they're saying like, oh, you're a guest star for those seven episodes, so we can pay you a much lower rate, 100%. which is not something you can, you know, again, make your year with. And that's and 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 look, I, a lot us, a lot of friends we have have tried to we've tried to talk about this in the past. Yeah, and I think some have been fucking torn apart for trying. Like you know what I mean? Like some people, people are weirdly brainwashed and try to stick up for studios for whatever reason. I think that's a really small sliver. It of- is. It is. It's a small sliver. But like, look, when we've said Netflix sucks in the past, it's the truth. They are bad. They're, yeah, they're a bad. bad company. They underpay people. And yeah. That's just the way. It, it goes. And most of these streaming places are the same thing. They underpay people. And look, I feel that way about everyone. If you're if you're overworked and underpaid, no matter what profession you're in, it's fucking bullshit. And, and it that's shouldn't most be that way. Working people it, it these is. days. Yes, of course. And of course, we're dealing with our two industries right now, which are going through that themselves. But Wags, yeah, I'm 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 pissed off in a in a week that should be 
that should be a, a week. when you should be getting pissed on in celebration. <laughs> He wrote a joke in a sketch that was very much that exact line. Yeah. Like when Weiger gets pissed off, something gets pissed on. Isn't oh, yeah. That right. That's in the right. corn yeah, sketch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Wags, is there anything else you'd like to say? I, ha- I wrote down a couple more. I have, things. I have, you know, mm-hmm. this was a feature I was doing a little while back when I was doing these solo Weiger's Nito stat mm-hmm. of the week. This isn't exactly a stat, but I thought this was a great little bit of information. Not a great bit of information or a foreboding bit of information. Uh, but SAG AFTRA, as WGA did earlier, released a statement that basically laid out all of their negotiation points and all of the responses from the studios. And I just want to talk specifically about AI because this is something that, you know, I think people hear this word and maybe aren't sure exactly how it uh, manifests itself in the workplace. Uh, but here's here's an example of something that was discussed. Uh, the bullet point is, Performers need the protection of our images and performances to prevent replacement of human performances by artificial intelligent technology. Us, sag after. Here's a comprehensive set of provisions to grant informed consent and fair compensation when a digital replica is made or our performance is changed using AI, meaning you can change someone, alter someone's voice or facial expressions or what have you, add additional dialogue without compensating somebody, etc. Uh, them uh, from AMPTP. We want to be able to scan a background performer's image, pay them for a half day's labor, and then use an individual's likeness for any purpose forever without their consent. We also want to be able to make changes to principal performers' dialogue and even create new scenes without informed consent. Insane. And we want to be able to use someone's images, likenesses, and performances to train new generative AI systems without consent or compensation. You can see the path this leads down, which is that, you know, a lot of times like, well, you sign the contract, but you may have a choice between, you know, uh, like if your choice is get a paycheck and sign this document or, you know, don't get paid. Yeah. A lot of people are, are, are backed in the corner because they're they're powerless in that situation. Uh, and so the, the where you see this endpoint is is they basically it just turns into a capture section session where we're going to have someone just say a bunch of common words and then we're going to be able to train generative AI and then we can use their likeness to do whatever we want with them. I mean, it's 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 just such blatant disrespect for people. It's it's really insane. One hundred percent. And look, that's a lot of these studios. They in in, in a lot of these jobs, they want to make you feel like you're on the bottom. That's just that's that's a part of the power dynamic. Yeah. They want to make you feel small. So here's the thing. Here's a little factoid for you too, Wags. COVID put a lot of aud- auditioning on tape. There used to be casting rooms. The studio, So those shut down because of COVID, COVID and people realized, studios realized like, hey, we can do a lot of casting over on tape. Yeah, this thing that began by necessity of yes. like, I'm going to self-tape my performance yeah. and submit it uh, il- digitally. So this saves yeah. studios millions of dollars. And time because they don't have to have open casting offices. They don't have to have people come in and and read with a casting associate. Right. And do do the actors see any of that money? No. What happens is is that you have to get a good camera so that your tape looks good. You have to find someone to read with. You have to get equipment to audition. You have to edit all the stuff. It's more time for the actor, more money for the actor. Yes. And the studios just take all that fucking profit. And it's infuriating. And here's the thing that's awful. And I've been told this before. You make these tapes, you get someone to help you audition, you put yourself on tape, and then they don't even fucking watch the tapes. They don't watch them, Because yeah. that's how much they t- treat you like trash. They're just so used to treating you like trash that they don't care. And I've at multiple times I've put in a tape and been told that my tape wasn't even watched. And that is infuriating. And that's just, and that's the level of respect that they give actors now and writers. It's the same thing. Yeah. Writers do a bunch of free works. They do packets and th- they've gotten so out of hand with it. But like, I mean, back in the day, if you memorize lines for an audition, you were supposed to be paid. And that's the thing with my union. I want my union to protect me, not just when strike issues come up, but every, yeah, sure. every day. You know what I mean? I, I, we need that protection from these, from these companies and studios because it's gotten so out of hand. And it's so adversarial. Yeah. What you were just talking about is... And this was another thing that that you know the, the this is from the same document regarding casting and self tamed auditions. Uh, SAG AFTRA said their basically demand was disclose if an offer is out or the role has already been cast, which which you uh, which you mentioned, yeah. Mitch, at the time self taped auditions are requested because it's a thing that can happen. It's just like for whatever reason they just like like oh we already have this uh, we already are going to cast this person, but mm-hmm. whatever, let's have some more people send things in. Um, and uh, they countered rejecting they uh, the studios counter rejected uh, disclosing when an offer is out. 
and uh, asked and required performers to contact production to ask if a role has already been cast. So they're only and their their thing is they will only endeavor to respond. So it's all these weasel words, which means they actually have no obligation to do any of that mm-hmm. uh, because they just uh, they again they just don't respect people's time. They don't respect people's time. Yeah. It's 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 embarrassing. And also, who the fuck are these idiots? You know what I mean? Like they're idiots. Yeah, they, they're they're dummies. They're not the creative people. You know what I mean? I mean, now I'm going to lose myself jobs forever, but I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's it, they, 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 they they're so used to treating us like shit. And it's it's embarrassing. I mean, it's that sort of I can't tell you how many times, like I said, I've been told they didn't even watch your tape or, oh, we're hiring something, somebody local. Yeah, I'm like, I made a tape for no reason. Or how many times they've been like, hey, you booked it. It's the most exciting thing in the world. You booked something. And it's like, just so you know, the money, you're going to get the minimum. That just always exactly, happens. Yes. It happens all the time. Yeah. So look, I know people. Or they're like they like they 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 liked your tape, but uh, you know they put in the spank bank. <laughs> like I don't want someone fucking cranking I don't off want to my tape. Cranking off to my fucking tape. Iger's j- jacking off to Weiger. He's like that's he's fucking that's he loves nothing more. But Wags, they love treating us like trash. I, I think they don't know the difference anymore. And I'm mad. I'm mad as hell. And it 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 needs to change. And it's a week that should be for me. A celebratory week is instead a week where I'm fucking pissed off. And for a lot of great people you worked with. A hundred percent. And it's, 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 it's unfortunate. Again, right? we're lucky. We're lucky. Everyone's going to make stairs jokes. But as as a working actor and, 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 and Wags as a working writer, you know that the treatment that actors and writers get is, is, is ridiculous until you make it to the top level. I think that's the thing that people get confused by is they think of actors as Tom Cruise and Kevin Hart. Yes. And writers as Shonda Rhimes and, uh, you know, Ryan Murphy. And it's and not, it's wrote, not just uh, sound of freedom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was just the news, man. <laughs> But yeah, Mugs, it's, it's true. It's infuriating and things need to change. And, and, uh, and, and that's that. Well, hey, let's that have said, a fun episode. I do think this was a really fun episode. It we, was. We recorded it at a little bit of an awkward time. We recorded it literally the final day of negotiations when it looked like a strike was, was imminent, but we weren't quite sure. Yeah. And so there's some of that energy like in this episode. Yeah. Um, Hey, we're coming. Iatsi is coming for you next too. I hope Iatsi gets a great deal. Iatsi and the Teamsters. That's yeah. a, that's that's next year. Uh, but you know, and and on, also in the, the episode, I think if we'd had if we'd had the full like guidelines for uh, you know what we're we're doing in terms of promotion and and social media and stuff, maybe I wouldn't have spent twenty minutes gushing about Encanto. Uh, it was the only time I've seen you nervous with a guest. It was bizarre. <laughs> um, also, it was funny for me to be like, I shouldn't be saying this. I'm going to lose jobs. No one listens to this fucking show. What the fuck am shit. I talking about? That was bullshit. Sorry. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> anyway, it's a good episode. Give it a listen. Give it a listen uh, and enjoy this episode where we're going to talk about home state. <laughs> Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger, along with my co-host, a real-life Ken doll genital-wise, the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. Jesus. Long walk there. So basically, okay, I get it. Yeah, it's, it's no, pretty self-explanatory. No That's from yeah. Brian E. Roast Spoonman at gmail.com. You ever undress a Ken doll? That was the first thing I did when I got my hands on one when I was a kid. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I remember I got a Ken doll. I was like, I'm taking off all his clothes. That's all you do with Barbies. You just yeah. have sex. And uh, that was the whole point. My my experience with a Ken doll, and and our guest may. And I, I'm I'm curious if our, our, our guest's experience lines up. Is that you undress him? He has like you know nothing down below, but if you <laughs> examine it closely, there is like an underwear like outline that matches his skin tone. Depends on the model of the Ken. Okay, that's the Ken I examined. There is a Ken with a plastic outline, brief situation, and then there's the Ken with just the mysterious lump. Wow, okay. The mysterious lump fits right in, right into the (laughs) slot with the Barbie as well. (laughs) They fit right together. What do you think of what did you what did you think when you when you when you when you, when you this was revealed to you, Wags? What did you think of it? Uh, I was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was also like, that's weird that his underwear is the same color as his skin. I just remember being confused by that. 
I like a, a young Wiger going to the toy store and be like, I want to return this defective Ken doll. <laughs> <laughs> Roastspoonman at gmail.com. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I saw naked Barbies and yeah, I feel like Barbies did. would always end up naked. Like you just see like a naked. This you, is what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. You just, you just, That's what you kids know, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. But I didn't. I, I, I mean, I was, I was a Ninja Turtle guy to sure. be clear. Yeah. Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters. Those were my two. I was a little he. I had a little bit of He Man crossover. Do you remember He Man had some like fun ones? There was one that was a skunk that kind of smelled. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, Stinkor. Stinkor. <laughs> yeah. Stink-or? Was his name Stinkor? Stinkor. He literally smelled bad. Stinkor. Stinkor. Stink-or. Right. Where it's the W H O R E O R R E. Stinkor. Oh man. Poor Stinkor. Aww. I know. Saddled with that name, <laughs> fated to live up to it. And there was Moss Man. What was Moss Man's name? The Moss guy. Yeah, his name. Are... I think it was Moss Man. His name was Moss Man. I think there was a Moss Man. Stinkhor Moss Man. Yeah, Moss Man. It was From Moss the Gray Man. Skull Wiki. Gray Skull. I was, but I wasn't like a huge. He Man was like a little bit before my time. Yeah, I was like He Man was right in my sweet spot. I was super yeah. into He Man. I loved He Man. I, I was so, allowed to get the figures, but no. You know, I gotta ask. Mm-hmm. What was that He Man like without his trunks? Man, <laughs> fucking. Disappointing. Weren't they built on? Like, it wasn't it like a purple? Wags yeah, you really off. had to chisel on it. Yeah, it was not a. Wags handshaking, bloody fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> he managed to get the pants off somehow. I got to get out of this 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 uh, Castle Gray Skull wiki. I'm going to be buried in this. I'm going to close the tab. You can leave that open. No, for I'm going to close the tab. All right, so I just looked up at Emma. Blade, uh, Trapjaw, Too Bad, Beast Man, Merman, Faker, Panthor. Remember all those. Grizzlore, Hordak, of course. There's a lot Leech. of- Hordak, again, Hordak. 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 That was a theme. Leech, Mantena, Dragstore, Moduloc, and Multibot. Dragstore. These ones I like. Slushhead, Flog, Krita, <laughs> Optic, Lizor, Karate, and Karate? Quake. Karate? It's Karate, but it's spelled with a T-T-I. Oh. And, then the, and then there's the many snake men. Including Cobra Khan and Snake. So many Face problems and here. Radmore. So many problems. <laughs> I'm kind of the mini Snake Man. <laughs> um, that goes back to you the earlier what? joke. You know what? You're beautiful. You're Thank perfect. You. Just the way you are. You've been saying there this. You a, and, uh, I just keep piling on myself. Won't I won't let you be shitty to yourself. I've been. I've been. I've been away. I feel a little bloated. I've been in Boston, Nick, for a great. while. But I, look, everything's good. Emma's frozen. So uh, we just have to point this out that Emma is frozen and looks <laughs> like Wednesday Adams, we'll, kind of. Yeah, we'll insert this into our video and we'll put this on our social media. But Emma lo- is generally terrifying, but is extra terrifying right now in this state. Her head just ducked down a little bit, tilted forward. Eyes just completely dead. I think you look really pretty, Emma. <laughs> yeah, look. Emma look always looks great. Your skin looks great. Looks great. Your Emma always looks are great. Cute. It does just look like she's <laughs> the orphan, maybe. <laughs> I mean, is giving a little orphan. In all fairness, this is her normal reaction little... to our jokes. So. <laughs> <laughs> kind of locked into that state. Yeah, that's true. She might. We, we're not even sure if it is frozen. She maybe has just been listening to our podcast. And then I come in here, Wags. Another issue: the the mic arm is broken. That's right. Marty fucked up the. I have to say what you said. You don't. don't I don't want to say it. No, because he's my friend. He's my friend too. I think he'll be fine with this. The, you said that. So what happened? Adam you're... Conover had to lower the microphones so he could get his hair into the frame. <laughs> 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 He, we you like we like Conover. He, we like him a lot. We like we we do like him a lot, and he's a great union guy. Wise, yes, we've talked 100%. about this. It's funny you can say that. He knows he's got big hair. He's not. That's not a it's secret. It's part of his look. Yeah, he's part cultivated of his look. that look. A hundred percent. He knows this. Actually, my hair is smaller than average. <laughs> <laughs> Infographics of his hair. The average male hair height is four and a half inches. <laughs> Adam. We don't buy that. <laughs> That's one factoid I can't. As you'll see by this normal man, Bart Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> you think that like uh, the studio executives are like they're looking out their window and they just see like the top of Adam's hair striking by every day? <laughs> <laughs> Again, we uh, we like Adam a lot. We He's like a great guy. Him. 
He's a great guy and a great union and a great union guy. He was he was speaking truth to us, which why our fellow headgum uh, a label mate here after at network. midnight tonight. We're we're getting this episode in under under the wire. We should okay. We should we should. We but can also just... yes, we should address this. But also we're doing all the right moves so that we're not violating anything here. You're you're a huge union guy. Of course, oh, two months. So you ask me. All right. I like to scab it up a little bit here and there. Uh, but we will. I'll, I'll, I'll timestamp okay. this. We're recording this on July July twelfth. This is the day that the SAG after a deadline, like contract deadline, it's, it's set to expire. We don't know what's going to happen. We'll we'll certainly know by the time this episode comes out in a couple weeks. But that's when we're recording this. Yeah. Uh, the guidance has come out for SAG after members, uh, and that is to it is very you know understandably, but is very restrictive in terms of what you can mm-hmm. say about any sort of upcoming project. So we're going to be yeah, a let's little just say bit... hypothetically, a little you bit have a new show this. that you want everybody to watch. You're yeah. excited about it. Can't really talk about it. Right. Can't go to a premiere. Can't do anything. But hypothetically, it's the greatest show that it was ever That's created. hypothetically. <laughs> Everyone's got to check it out. the best. We're talking very generally and in the just abstract here. All very, yeah. you <laughs> yeah. know, let's say it's also based on a really hugely popular piece of IP. What's that IP? Who knows? Don't know. Who can say Doesn't it? matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. It's not important right now. It's not important. That's not that's It's not, not important. It doesn't. What's important is that. It's uh, sticking to the rules. It's sticking to the rules and, and that. Actors get a fair deal, one hundred percent, and that writers get a fair deal. Yes, one hundred percent. Say that hypothetically, you had a theme month planned around maybe this upcoming release of a show. You can't do it anymore. <laughs> so we had you maybe not we maybe they, <laughs> they had to hypothetically throw it out the window too. I'll be honest. You and I discussed, and we actually pulled the plug on everything before this guidance came out just in terms of like any sort of thing that is that is true so we're you know we're we're we're, we're, we're trying our best not we're not just like like oh they're making us do this we're That's trying true. our best to abide by this spirit yeah. of the agreement wags was ahead of the curve as always i wasn't trying to push it or anything no one like was that. no one thought you were and our lovely guest also yourself. was very aware of these things yes. but Theory. we hope that sag after gets a good deal 100%. and we hope that wga gets a good deal we stand with sag after as yep. a wga member god i gotta walk every day <laughs> <laughs> It's just a lot. It's a lot of work. Good for you. I know. We'll be good. over on the line. Hear what you said about me. (laughs) (laughs) Slashes me with his hair. (laughs) We love that guy. Great guy. Great Great dude. Great guy. Mitch, you got a drop. Oh, yeah. Emma? Emma. (laughs) (laughs) We can't, to our audio listeners, cannot convey how terrifying Emma looks in this state. He's giving what the ring? Yeah, one hundred percent. I sent her. I sent her. I sent. <laughs> I sent her a picture of it, and she she has now. She's seen it. She's laughing at it. That's fucking terrifying. <laughs> Emma, let's hit him with a drop, please. Michael. Do we flight? Turn off El Razor. Facebook. Michael, don't mess with the lament configuration. Michael, the Cenobites are your enemy. Ugh. Michael, Freddy is haunting my dreams. What's this do? Michael. So embarrassing. With our <laughs> this show sucks. This show sucks. <laughs> Explain it to me. Explain it to me. Explain it to me. We. He does an impression on my mom. That's Michael, that's and that's your, what he does. That's your mom. Yeah. That's your mom. And then, like, we always Which often because sometimes Mitch yeah. records in Quincy, Massachusetts, where he's from, and his mom is off camera and will yell things to him while he's recording. So I, I took that and <laughs> ran with it. <laughs> but it's not your mom, to be clear. It's not, it's not mom. my. That it's not me. my mom. But yeah. like, also, like, my mom's getting scared in that clip about the lament configuration, yes. which is from Hellraiser. But as as someone who does musicals, I would say record your mom. And put it on, drop it on the, some of those beats because I, I do think the actual mom voice might be. So she doesn't I, want you to do it. No, I agree with she you. She doesn't want to be a star. I agree with you. <laughs> What's these, wrong with her? These are all listener made, so I'm not going to help them do shit. I'm not going to help them make these drops. All right. All right. That's all in right. fact why I started doing because I used to do my own drops, and then I was like, this is too much work. I'm going to outsource this to. The listeners to do it every week, and they although do it. I think this is a great pitch, we can do Mama Mitchell Drop Month. We could get your mom to record like 
a half dozen lines and then people can remix them however they see fit. That's if great, she's down yeah. for it. Yeah, my voice is my passport. Far. Please verify me. Get a little sneakers <laughs> song situation going in there. I'm gonna, it's going to be embarrassing to be like, Mom, can you say like, like I'm afraid of Freddy Krueger or whatever I'm going to have her say. That's <laughs> she's 75 years old. I don't want to have. But then you can record her being like, Michael, no. That's I'm a, not saying that. That is also true. There that is go. true. And she will probably say that. She also, here's the other thing. Doesn't sound anything like that at all. What does she sound That's like? Mix. Do your she's best a, mom impression. Hmm. She has a, she has a, I'd say a strong Boston accent. Hi, Lammy. That's what she calls me. Lammy. She calls you Lammy. That's cute. Mm-hmm. That's really sweet. And then at one point, I used to be afraid of saying this, but I did say it on the show already, so I'll just admit it. At one point, I was like, I'm too old for Lammy. And she's like, how about Rammy? I was like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that, that works. That works better. I think I maybe even I said Rammy. Uh <laughs> My wife, Ellen, and I love the pod and made this drop. Michael! Greg. That's from Greg. (laughs) Thank you, Greg. Greg and Ellen. What a cute couple. That is a cute couple. Thinking about them having a glass of white wine, talking about which line to put in, (laughs) playing it back and forth for each other. Kind of maybe depressed, weirdly. No, I love it! (laughs) Thank you, Greg and and Ellen. Uh, Better not be Ellen DeGeneres. I just checked the uh, the Gray School wiki. Uh, Rami is part of the evil horde, so... (laughs) Remember Ellen was mean to everyone? She was, yes. That was her. She back? Is Ellen back? Maybe back. I don't know. We don't need to talk about this. We're not here to talk about Ellen. Why not? I think it's I think that specifically is a violation of the SAG after guidance. <laughs> <laughs> no There's social media, Ellen no calls? Ellen. No Ellen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Good work by Ellen's people, I guess. <laughs> She's powerful. Uh, uh, also, I need to say, because people will want me to say it in front of our guests, it's embarrassing. Right. Howdy ho to Spoon Nation. <laughs> Oh, that was really cute. Oh, God. That was really good. <laughs> Ew! What was, what, remember that character? What was her name? Wait, which one? The little girlfriend? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what is it? What is this? The, 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 which, what's who's a little girlfriend? No, she's like. Stan's little girlfriend? Yeah, Stan's girlfriend. Right? Oh, what was her name? Oh, like Stan's oh, little girlfriend. Oh, Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Yeah, right? Yeah, Wendy. 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 Yeah. And I and this that is Mr. Hank. Oh, God. Mr. Hanky. Oh, I know who it is. I watched my fair share of South Park back in my day. We'd watch it in high school. I showed my mom some of Team America when I was home. <gasps> America, and, fuck yeah! It is really funny, and so, you know some of it is aged poorly a little bit. But some like, of it? So, I mean, a lot I would of it. Argue most of it has aged yeah, most poorly. Yeah, most of it has aged poorly. But those guys, man, they they still make me laugh so much. Yeah. That, yeah, what was it? Least Michael. They were too mean to Michael Moore. <laughs> <laughs> I love all Michaels. <laughs> Lammy, uh, our guest today from Brooklyn Nine Nine and Encanto, and an upcoming series we're not going to talk about. Stephanie Beatriz. Hello. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Great to have you. It's very nice to be here. What a treat! Thank you Thank so much you. for making time for us. I've said this. I gushed about this on podcast. I'm going to say this, this in fr- on pod in front of Mitch. Uh, Natalie, my lovely wife and I are huge Encanto fans. It's really nice. And really, really enjoy your performance, really love Family, family Madrigal. Uh, and you you performed that live at the Hollywood Bowl. I did. part of Encanto Live. You were saying that was a very stressful experience. It was hell! <laughs> <laughs> it was absolute fucking hell! I mean, we had three days of rehearsal. The dancers had a month. We had three days. They, like, plugged us in. I think they were thinking that we were just going to be able to, you know, do it. But it had yeah. been a year since we had sung those songs. Uh, I, Lynn Manuel Miranda, who wrote the music, was like, you know, that song's the first song of this is not written to be sung Yeah, live. There's oh, no man. space to breathe. There's no space to breathe in this song. I think I did it li- like all the way through maybe twice in the booth. And I was like, <gasps> you know, yeah, because uh, so, ver- those runs by the end are so like just they're pretty like, fast. Nimble. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty fast. But I did it, and I'm very proud of it, and brought a lot of joy to people. Also, the Hollywood Bowl is like fucking phenomenal. It's just you know, yeah. you walk out on that stage, and you're just like, the Beatles played here, you know, like b- 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 the Beatles. I mean, like <laughs> it's cool really hell. cool. It was really, really, really cool and magical. And also. Bart Simpson. We went and saw Simpsons we Live. We did see Simpsons Live. Simpsons Live, Live yeah. The Hollywood Bowl, which and was a wild experience. I would say I I, I only watched Encanto Live on YouTube. Uh, I, that was, that was a, that up. was a better show. 
I would say it's a better show than Simpsons Live. No, better than Simpsons Live? Yeah, no. Was. I think it was. No, I don't believe it. I worked at The Simpsons. <laughs> I worked at The Simpsons. And Simpsons Live, when, when what did Nancy, she came out and saying do the Bartman? She said right? do the Bartman to close it out. Yeah. I the, can't believe I came on your podcast and you're telling me <laughs> this trash. Simpsons Live. Absolutely not to, out of the park. disgusted with this. <laughs> disgusted. Uh, no, Simpsons Live was uh, bad. Uh, and uh, <laughs> no, I'm I never sure saw Encanto. Uh, I never saw Encanto Live. No, it was it was a uh, Simpsons Live was very interesting. It was a strange show, but uh, it was was a blast as a Simpsons fan. You oh, enjoyed I it, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's also just a cool space to be in. It's like looking up at the stage and the band shell and the whole thing. It's beautiful. Did you do that should, anywhere should else? An, should I have an admission that will get you mad? I'm ready. I've never seen Encanto. Oh, you should watch it, Mitch. Oh! I am mad. I'm gonna I wa- actually am I'm mad gonna, I'm going to watch it. I'm, I'm gonna watch furious. It. Look. I feel like a burning sensation in my gut. <laughs> I can't I, believe this. Look. Unreal. Explain as a single, yourself. As a single s- solo white, white man, yeah. <laughs> going to children's movies by myself is sometimes hard. So I it's never- It doesn't stop me. the internet. You yeah. can go yeah. find it anywhere. You I have a wife, Monsters she just won't Inc. go by with myself. You. I love Monsters Inc. <laughs> I, Monsters You, so, that was a solo this adventure. What? We named our kid Roz. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And like, there's a fancy story behind it, but the real story is it's funny. It's just Mike Wazowski. I mean, it's so <laughs> funny to good. think about a toddler named Roz. It's I love so that. funny to me. I. I don't talk to me anymore. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Fuck. I can't even believe it. You a year and a half of my that. life. I, I first of all, it's one of the biggest films of all time. I, I, I brag to everyone that <laughs> Stephanie from Encanto <laughs> is in the movie. That's why, and everyone is like, "Oh my god!" It's like, like everyone with kids who I told that you were in the show were going. Nuts. Can my kids watch it? That, that's You're like, like don't, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people, people, were, people were going nuts over that. I wanted to be honest that I hadn't seen. It. I'm going. I'm glad you're honest I'm, now. You I'm, could watch it. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it, and I think that you've been great and everything. We've had a lot of crossover. Yeah. I was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You were that's fantastic right. in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. You were too. Oh, that's very nice of you to say. I you was, were so funny. I, 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 I was very – they talk so – I mean, Andy, too, especially. They talk so, so fast. fast. They yeah, talk so fast Yeah, but I thought your show. rhythm with what they were doing was really a great juxtaposition, and it was just so, like – I don't know. There was something really like pure about that character, which I thought was so funny. That, that, my, it was. It, I. That's very kind of you to say. But I. But I. As Nick knows, I can barely say a sentence normally at a, <laughs> at a regular speed. So when it was like, like I was like, I gotta pick up the pace. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta pick up the pace. So it was. Uh, anyways, you're hilarious. And I was gonna say this. I was gonna say this to the end, but I'm gonna say it now. You're funny and cool. And also, uh, you're very generous as an actor to people who are not as big of actors. You're very generous. And also, you will tag people like me who don't even – and other actors who are big like you don't always do that. And you're cool as hell. And well, thank you for doing the show, and you rule. That's and I, really that is nice. that that is sincere. So I'm, that's really nice. I dug myself a huge oh. hole, but that is that is that is that is that <laughs> is that is that is that is that is that is you the got truth. a real gift for that turning it around there, <sighs> man. Yeah. Bring, I, you bring know what? It would have been sweat, fine but... if I just told you I didn't see it in content. I was gonna see it because of you, but then everything else that happened after that made me really feel like I fucked up. I fucked up so bad. Well, listen, listen, you're honey. You're doing great. You're doing great. And you're so. And hypothetically, you're fantastic in a hypothetical something. Thank you. Hypothetically, thank you. Yes. I hypothetically appreciate that. But in real life, (laughs) fuck you, man. Uh, can we talk about food a little bit? Because I'm curious. Because I, I I know I I saw that you 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 grew up uh, in part in Texas. Yep. You spent a lot of time in Texas, and I assume that's why you picked this week's chain. Yes. Um. But I but you know there's a lot of Texas. There's a lot of distinct Texas cuisine. There's some specific Texas chains like Whataburger. Correct. Are Your there any? Here as we get into this. Okay. Yeah. Like what what is what is the Texas food that maybe that that you crave and that you maybe miss in L.A. I do love a Whataburger. It What's is your order of Whataburger? Plain. Just okay. Plain it's pickles. A plain bird. Really? Wow. Extra pickles, extra pickles. If I'm feeling fancy, I'm maybe gonna put some ketchup on it. But like uh, to me, the 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 square of the meat and the little bun with the pickles is like it. That's it. Wow. Burger. 
Also, if you have to not eat it in the car, which we when we were little, we were not allowed to eat until we got home. So like all that sauce and stuff makes everything soggy. Yeah. I'm really getting specific about food now. This, no, this is, what is what we're good. doing. That's okay. what this, this is the show. Sadly, this Great. is the show. No, 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 no. I'm show. into it. I'm into it. Too many sauces on a, a drive through pickup burger. You're going to get it home. You're going to come out with a soggy mess. One sauce, maybe no sauces, maybe just the vinegar from the pickles. Mm. You're solid. I, I agree with that, but I also, I feel like probably both of us like a good sog. Like you, like you like to get I'm okay you, with a sog. I don't like a soggy. I get it. I, I, I get it. Especially if you're traveling quite a bit. To... It's different with like a sandwich with like a crusty bread. Yeah, I'm okay with like a sog in the middle, but the hamburger bun is like soft all the way through. So if you sog it out, it's just like, well, what the fuck was the point of that? Sure. You know I'm mean? trying to think of the biggest sog offenders, and I'm like, does BK get a good sog BK, going? It's, it gets the pretty BK soggy. Is pretty BK soggy. gets a little soggy. I feel like any place that has like kind of like. Lettuce and it's mayo. The lettuce, the yeah. onion, yeah, the 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 tomato, the big beef. McDonald's steak tomato. not too. I mean, like McDonald's. I think of a McDonald's cheeseburger. I'm like, that's never soggy. No, it's gonna almost last to, five years. That's exactly. It's almost the to the other texture. way of like yeah. not. Yeah, maybe this isn't right. Well, I think hundred percent, it's not right. I think the bun is delicious. a big part of that because I also think that with like in now burger, it gets all that soggy. You think it it would get soggy with I all those know. veggies on there, but I think that bun holds up a little bit. I don't think in and out burger is also a thing that you got to eat pretty quick. I was you just gonna say fast. you yeah, want to yeah. eat it right away. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what a hamburger is all there's about. A, there's, there's, it's what a hamburger is all about. <laughs> it is what a hamburger is all about. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot I'm of, arguing with you. There's you, you run it through the garden. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff on that sure. burger. So it can't. I think it, I think that can get more soggy than you're than you're letting on. Wendy's he's, a, he's like a, he's like he's an in and out guy. Yeah, I like it. I, like I mean, I'm from SoCal. Uh, but what, Wendy's Wendy's decently soggy. I feel like Carl's Jr. It's like it's like that's the point. It's like comes soggy, right? I don't, I don't fuck with Carl's Jr. Wow, I don't interesting. Fuck with Carl's Jr. I can't get behind it. There's something about Jr. the way the sign looks. I can't. It just, the advertising. Is not for me. I'm the not famous the star. Uh, not the target audience for that. Wow. I don't know why. I Carl's Jr. to me does, and Nick, I think you'll agree. It does feel like a big fat fatty spot to go. <laughs> they leaned like, into that. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, it. I mean, I'm just. It's. It's just like. The the ads were like big burgers yeah. falling. Oh, and, and, You're a piece <laughs> of shit. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, I just want to be clear. That's not why I don't like the sign. It's nothing to do with anyone's body size. It's no, just no, no, no. About I'm saying the Nick... way that the shape of no. the sign is gives me the heebie-jeebies. It's like the curliness of the Carls and then the Junior. It's just like ugh, I can't. I, I, I'm an saying aesthetic issue. It's we're, an aesthetic we're, issue. We're, but we're attracted to that. To the like, we like like yeah. come and eat it, you big fat fuck. <laughs> we like that. <laughs> we do like it. <laughs> It's like Paris Hilton in the commercial was like, get her out of the way. I want to oh, see that fucking big sloppy that burger. That's funny. Because it was horny. It, they were, it was horny ads. They leaned to the horn. That was a long time ago. That yeah. was a distant all day. All burger ads are kind of horny, though. It's like the it's burger true. is like sweating. The meat is like all glistening. That's true. You know what I mean? It's all, there's like the angles are like, you know, low angle and then kind of like rides over They're very everything. sensual. It's very You're right. sensual. It's very sensual. It's, it's, it is. It is I, and I kind of, I do kind of love that. I, I love that about burger yeah. ads. Yeah. But I, the, the, the Carl's Jr. one's a little too horny. I've I never wanted a woman to see me eating. Especially Carl's Jr. Oh or yeah, like any no, of fast course. food burgers. I get very. Does that when I like go on dates? I get very. No, does not. No one else self conscious about. Either. It's been a long time since I've been on like a date. But yeah. yes, when I definitely I you know, remember that experience. When I had an eating disorder, yes. Mm. Yeah, when That's I was like, no, it's not a good sign, <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah, it's not a good sign. You yeah. want to like take a look at your your relationship with food and well, eating? Well, let me tell you, it's not good. <laughs> Listen, I think it's great. You clearly love and enjoy eating because I do. That's part of this podcast, which is fucking great. But I think more, more so, I think what it is, I don't think it's as much. Oh no, this person see me, but more, I think I have something on my oh, face. Oh well, yeah, sure, that, yeah, yeah, that. And I think that comes from I had acne when I was younger. I think it's maybe an acne thing. So I think it's like that's so interesting. I had really bad. I had really bad acne when we were really? maybe hypothetically doing a project together. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I never, I never noticed that. Well, that's sincerely. because I hypothetically had a lot of blood splattered all over my face. Oh wow! <laughs> so you couldn't see it. Wow. It was kind of magical. 
I had really bad cystic acne through and nodular acne through like my er, into my early 20s. And the thing that finally got me out of it was Accutane. I don't know if anyone else did Accutane. That's what I'm on right now. Are you really? I'm on it right now because oh, wow. I got a staph infection oh my God. on a project that I was on because they weren't cleaning the brushes correctly. Oh my God. So now I bring my, I'm like super, I fucking wash all my shit. I like bring my shit. I got a staph infection. We had to stop shooting this was not our hypothetical project is another uh, hypothetical project that i perhaps did right we had to stop production because i like had this i woke up my how la- my lip was like swollen i had never wanted to go on accutane because i was like i don't want this shit to make me fucking depressed yeah. you know but then i went on and uh, so, so far so good it's that's, pretty great yeah that, that's that that is that's horrifying i never i, I never took it when i was younger and i kind of wish that i did but I never, uh, I never, I never did because there were some side effects back in the day, right? Uh, it was like it was like a side effect is like psychosis. Yeah, the it was side like, effects it's are really intense. intense. Yeah. So like you, yeah, may we should probably get to... Nick off Accutane. <laughs> <laughs> you already took it. He's yeah. done with it. Oh, all right, yeah, he's done with it. I, however, I pull out a giant knife and stab you both in the neck. <laughs> we both say thank you. <laughs> I will say the side of side effects aside, it was something of it was it's it's the uh, the the two things I've experienced with medicine. One is uh, one is Accutane, and the other is and I did have a recent respiratory infection where I was on prednisone, but I've been on prednisone and been on other steroids uh, for my lungs over the years, and those they both like kind of like oh they just are miracle drugs. They've just kind of fixed everything. This podcast brought to you by Accutane and prednisone. <laughs> <laughs> Should we start re- re- reviewing pharmaceuticals? <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. That's late stage dough boys. We would. <laughs> I'll try some dough. Real money comes in dough. <laughs> Ka-ching. <laughs> oh man, so much money in pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Uh, is and like we're like one of the one only Ozempic countries wise? where that. Yeah. Ozempic. It's my mom sent me a side effect. It can have like you know, really bad. Uh, Depression stuff that happens Dang, with it. Man. Oh, you have man. to. You also have. To, I think you have to stay on it for forever. You have to stay on it. Yeah, because like the the forever? cravings just swing right forever, back. Forever, ever, forever, ever. That's yeah. I, I think so. Ugh. No, yeah. Uh, Ugh. Can we talk? Can, I'm, I'm curious. What well, we're talking about Texas, or we're talking about Texas a second ago? Do you have a, ta- a take on Bucky's? Are you a Bucky's enthusiast? I don't. I don't have a Bucky's take. Yeah. Um, it was not, not really in my. Uh, <laughs> it's like the Wawa of the South, right? Yeah. Isn't that sort of what it is? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not really, a, I mean, we grew up, we had a Nympha, or uh, not Nymphas, Um, we had, well, Nymphas is a great restaurant. Uh, We had like a Kroger near us. There was a Randall's at the time when I was a kid. Randall's was the fancy grocery store where they had a bakery. Um, We had a 7-Eleven by my house, but that, we didn't have a Bucky's. Yeah, the Bucky's yeah. that we, we've encountered, like, I got all them in Texas once in my life, and it was for a Doughboys tour, but we, when we've encountered them, they were like, they're like Walmart size. Yeah, like they're gastric. ginormous. They're yeah. huge. And I kind of like them from that standpoint. I think yeah. I've said this before, but Kroger sounds like a knockoff Kruger. Doesn't sound, it's not a good name. Mm. You don't you think know so? What? This is the second nail in your coffin <laughs> tonight. Because you know, I like Kroger. Oh, Kroger I'm sorry. Was, I, just, I, I, I don't some... know Kroger. I just don't know the I just don't know the I I don't like the name. <sighs> What do you mean? You mean well, it I don't like, like Carl's Jr.'s aesthetic, so okay. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough, fair Look, enough. Don't go after Dunkin' Donuts. That's from my hometown. Listen, I love a Dunkin'. Uh, the America runs you. on Dunkin'. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> they got Zooks. Yeah, they got they, Zooks. They got Zooks. Yeah. Uh, Zooks is doing the Dunkin' ads, wise. Yeah. Good for him. Not yeah. forever. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Healthy competition. <laughs> Uh, you uh, so you both were in New Orleans for a for a bit. I New Orleans, a lot of th- stuff shoots down there these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know we've talked on the show about the 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 yeah, as, as obvious. This is an obvious observation, but as a food city, mm. you know people talk about all the great eats you got down in oh Dubai. You and I'm curious, did you have any favorite meals oh. from your time? And knowledge. I feel like both of us ate so much good food uh, when we were there. We, I mean, I thought catering, which I like. I don't think cater- I don't <laughs> catering think- doesn't count. No, but I'm saying <laughs> catering is usually like never great. Yeah, that's true. But catering in New Orleans, I thought was it was it was really pretty, really it good. Was pretty yeah. I shouldn't say it's always. Sometimes it can be great, yeah. but like the New Orleans catering was it was it was a lot. It was heavy. It's a food, food. culture, and that uh, affects all aspects. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
I loved Koshan. We both went there. I love Koshan. Different, yep. different, Diff- different times. Yeah. And then the uh, wait, tell us about Koshan. Koshan's like super meat. Uh, it's all about their meat. It's all about like smoking and butchering, and mm-hmm. they've got specials all the time. They like do pork really well. They do like a beef braised or like a braised short rib. They've got oh, I think we ordered. What are they? Not chitlins, but oh yeah. Um, what are they called? I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? It's like the fried. Either. Pieces of pork skin, yeah. pork rinds, ch- pork ch- rinds, ch- 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 chicharron, right? chicharron, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like chicharron dipped in Steen's syrup, which is the syrup that they have down there. It's like ah. ugh, so delicious. The, and there was Koshan Butcher, which Koshan was, Butcher was their sandwich shop next, next door, door, which I also went to. Oh, and and why they had a they had a Pig Mac, which was two pork patties made like a Big Mac. That sounds so good. I'm drooling. And I it feel was like drooling. it was it was really good. That does sound really good. I ate I ate at Koshan Butcher like. 12 times. I was oh, wow. Cuz I was Amazing. there probably 40 times at 40 I, and I stayed right I I was at the what is it like a Holiday Inn ex- There was some there was some hotel that I was right. I guess I shouldn't pinpoint where it was. Yeah, I was not you don't smart. live there anymore. So <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah okay. that's fine. That's um fine. what was it what was the hotel we just stayed at on tour? You know, uh, suites. There's like Embassy Suites. Oh yeah, suites. we did Embassy Suites. suites. Yeah. It was an Embassy Suites. And then and and Koshan Butcher was like right up okay. the, like right up the street. And I'd walk out into the 100 degree heat, and I go to go Koshan get some meat, and go get some, and get a <laughs> bunch of meat. But Koshan itself was great. Uh, I liked the, why is the place you took me, on the first time I was ever in New Orleans. Oh yes, uh, this was. Um, I know oh, what you're talking about. God, why the fuck can't I remember is a, the name of it? This was a Van Roby Show recommendation. Mm-hmm. This is uh, what the fuck's it called? Was it fancy? Was it not fancy? It's it's like you sit down, but it's not like fancy fancy. I don't like remember Rollins the name, fancy. but the name was like Tubaloos or something. It was bullshit. like Tubaloos. <laughs> Let's just say it was Tubaloos. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was Tubaloos. Tubaloos. <laughs> Whoop a lot of sandwiches. What y'all get there? What was it? What kind of food was it? I remember the name. It was Jacques Emos. Jacques Emos. Okay. Jacques Emos. Okay. Tubaloos okay. is pretty close. Tubaloos was close. <laughs> it's in the same same world. Same cadence. <laughs> well, there was there was also a place. There was a dinner. Uh, hypothetically, hypothetically, uh, at at that old restaurant in New Orleans. Oh yeah, there, well, there's a couple of those old oldy timey ones, right? But, but the, this but, one was the one with the blue and white awning, right? Yeah, the, yeah, the the old school one that the, the the like the first cast. Yeah, our nods. And I couldn't go because I had COVID. Oh, we no. were just on tour, and so I I we had just on tour, and I wanted to go so bad. And I went with my mom and sister, and it was and it was great. I'll find out the name of it. Very old school. It was it was very old school. Yeah, yeah. it was fantastic. Why? I had turtle soup. I, never I had, had tur- I had turtle you soup. Had it? Mm-hmm. I was not about to have that. Oh fuck! No, I wasn't having it. I couldn't think about I feel it. Like fucking shredder over Listen, here. Listen, you are. <laughs> I said I love the Ninja Turtles at the top of the thing. Yeah, then I fucking eat then turtle you fucking soup. Eat turtles? How Bitch, do you... I had a pet turtle and I had turtle soup. What well. the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you monster! I know. I did feel monsters, but it was good as hell. <laughs> wasn't the turtle? Was it? It wasn't it was your, your it wasn't turtle. Your turtle? It well, was. yeah, they had a, his photo on the menu. <laughs> oh, chip. Rest well. in peace, little buddy. Rest <laughs> in peace, sis. <laughs> Delicious pieces of my soup. Chip actually ran away. Isn't that true? No, my other my other turtle ran oh away. Oh my god, my, my turtle ran away. Yeah, isn't that wild? What the hell? Yeah, I was cleaning his tank, and I turned around and he was gone. Yeah, he was. Ours was like a, lived in a little space in the backyard. Got loose, or like, well, that turtle's gone. And then another kid, like, was like, "We found a turtle," and I was like, oh, "That's my that's fucking my turtle. turtle." But I didn't like have enough evidence to be like, "I know that's my turtle because yeah. it's a turtle." Yeah, you know, fucking could have made Guinness for a trauma, fucking man. fastest turtle. Get the fuck away from Wiger. <laughs> Sometimes now I think like, did my turtle run away, or did like a cat just come by and scoop oh, it up? Shit. You know oh, I mean? that's something. Did that's something. another it thing. Did feel yeah. like I just turned my back and was I rinsing like a, the tank. I and... feel like a bird could. Easily, so some sort of bird yeah, could go in and grab that's it. That's possible. I didn't think about that. Um, why? Because I'm trying to think of more. Oh, you know where I went was uh, that sandwich shop. This is the issue. I have such a shitty bad memory. I can't remember fucking any. But it's I called like listen. is it Pullman's or something like that? What the fuck's it called? I'll pull I out. I, I didn't about. know we we're allowed to pull out our phones. Oh, 100%. I got all this on my Google Maps. Old, I got it all written down. Old New Orleans restaurant. <laughs> old New Orleans oh my restaurant. God. Okay, so my favorite place, some of my favorite places were Turkey and the Wolf. That place That's was great. What I, that was that what I was just trying to think phenomenal, of. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Mm. Um, collard greens are phenomenal. Molly's Rise and Shine for breakfast. That, which was from the Turkey and the Wolf people. So, same owners, yep. yeah. Um, 
I really like uh, oh Commander's Palace is the restaurant that oh, we have. Oh yeah, there. yeah. It's a classic. God damn it. I'm so slow on the phone. Oh, you're really it's a real Commander's sad Palace failure. is great. That's where I had turtle soup. I've never eaten it since. I never I, eat it again. Maybe I don't know. I guess I I was a little sad that it was turtles. I. I I, but is it actual turtle? Like that's the other thing is because I, I think some of the turtle soups are just called turtle soups. So they don't actually use turtle meat. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I guess we could ask. Mice arepas was really really good. They had oh. like Colombian uh, food. My family ordered from there a couple times. Yeah. Um, I really liked the truffle fries and the lunches at St. Vincent, the St. Vincent Hotel. Did you ever go there? Oh yeah, I never went. That place no. is great. My great. mom and sister stayed at the the hotel with the carousel inside of it. Oh yeah, did you drink yeah. at that bar? Yeah, we drank there. Yeah, oh, I the cocktails are nice. It was yeah. it, it got fixed the day like the day they were leaving. I think so. We sat mm-hmm. and had a drink there. It was nice. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, it was a good time. Michael, the bar's spinning. Michael, <laughs> I'm getting sick. Michael, <laughs> Lammy. Uh, the place, a place I called Pullman's, was Parkway Bakery and Tavern. I, that place has uh. really good sandwiches. Freddy Kroger is haunting my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm public domain, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm just looking up best restaurants in New Orleans because uh, I know that Superior I... Seafood and Oyster Bar. Oh, uh, I never went to Superior. Lauren seafood Ash either. and I went there when she wow. visited me, and we former drank... Doughboys guest. Yeah, that's right. We maybe drank like two bottles of wine. That Hell night yeah! And, like, wow, had a lot of the heart. Liger special. We closed it down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now she came on with uh, her cousin, right? Chris... That's right. Yeah, yeah, and they did McDonald's, right? Did they do McDonald's? No. They, what did we review? We would. You guys we do? would never allow that. We we. Oh. Excuse McDonald's, it, if, 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 except if, if you if you were like, I want to do McDonald's, you're probably like, okay. But uh, <laughs> we we uh, we're, we've never done McDonald's officially. Before. No, we've only did reviewed McDonald's breakfast, and mm-hmm. then we had a we had a tournament to determine the best McDonald's menu item. And as you might imagine, the result was fries. Uh-huh. Um, but Sarah I'll look Silverman had, did McDonald's breakfast. We did. That's correct. And she's like, "What's this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I here?" I work with Sarah. She did what she was in for. Oh, I went to Le, P- Le Petit Grocery. I did go oh, there. Oh, that place is great. I, that, that, that was that was great. And I went to Willie Mays Scotch House. I I went there. I liked that, that quite great. a bit. Yeah, yeah. Manders. I did. Did I go to Central Grocery Store? I feel like I did. Oh, that's where the muffletas are. Correct. Yeah, I think so. I don't know if I. Oh, I went to. T- you know what? I went to Toops Meadery. With Samoa oh, Joe. Oh, I went there. It was yeah. so good. We yeah. sat at the bar, me and my friend Jen, and we like just ate everything on the menu. It was great. Oh, we had, I had crab legs with Samoa Joe. Cute. He was, oh, he was like, he was he one, because we were talking about food, and he was like, let's pick a day. He's like, we're like, we'll pick a day, we'll eat. And I was like, this is great. And I was like, <laughs> kind of intimidated. Oh my yeah, yeah. God, that's so Samoa dreamy. Joe. Yeah. yeah. It's and then, like, an invite to like a special experience. It, kind of, it was it was it kind of ruled, and he yeah. was a, he's he's a good eater, and we drank we ate and drank. It was it was a blast. That's very cool. And I, oh, I went to that place that serves the burgers. You know that the burger the bar that's old and serves burgers. And burger it, King. Oh yes, <laughs> McDonald's, <laughs> Taco Bell. I think it was Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't the, know and it. They serve burgers with mashed potatoes. I, I'm sorry, not with mashed potatoes, with baked potatoes. That sounds amazing. That sounds it, fun. It was great. I'll find. I'll find out what it was. Koshan yes. is on this list. Koshan Butcher. Koshan is so good. Giacomo's. Uh Lauren Ash and Christy Oxborough reviewed KFC for the second time. KFC, KFC two. Uh, KFC. Uh, oh, I went to yes. Parkway. I, I I went. I tried like every po' boy place. I like. Okay. I tried like literally every spot. What was that your was favorite? Like, I think I did really like Parkway, but then also they like were like, "You're the po' boy king" because they. Recognized that I was on love that didn't happen the entire time I was down there, and they like put a medallion on me that had like a po boy on it, and they're like, "You're the po boy king," and I was like, "This is great." <laughs> that the po is boy king. so amazing! Oh my god! And I was like, you know, they were the like, "This is legendary." Yeah, it was. It was great. I kept the. I, I kept my little thing. I have it somewhere. What? What the? What are you? I think it's great. What the fuck? What are you, what are you thinking? I would oh, fucking make great. a shirt. I'd be wearing a shirt all the time that said, I'm the po' boy king. What the fuck is this motherfucker thinking is, the que- is my jealous. question. <laughs> He's very fucking jealous. Give him the bell and he won't hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Everybody oh, wants to be the po' boy king, but there true. can only be one. You're fucking jealous, man. I am jealous. <laughs> I love being the po' boy king. I ate so many po' boys. Oh, and I, did you have any of the shaved ice? The uh, yes. What is it called? See, yes. I'm, dude, uh, I'm being snow, such a snowballs. Bad. Snow. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I had a snowball at that at uh, one of the classic spots. I forget yeah, yeah, where. Yeah. Um, Hanson's. Hanson's. Yeah. It was Hanson's. Yep. Man, 
My brain. We ate a lot. We ate a lot during a our lot time there. You, well, didn't think, you didn't think we gave you that much, did you, buddy? <laughs> I, no, I loved it. I loved hearing just a 10-minute like uh, rant about all the New Orleans spots you hit up. I makes me want to go back. you're telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. Okay. No, sadly, he's telling the truth. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie, can we get into what, what is your favorite type of food? You, where, Ever? Well, did you did you say where you're from originally? I am from well, so I was born in South America. I was born in Argentina. My parents are my dad was Colombian, my mom is Bolivian. I was born in Argentina, but we immigrated to the United States when I was two. Okay. And we moved to right outside of Houston, Texas, area called Webster. Um, so Tex Mex is my favorite, favorite food. Your wow, favorite food. That yeah. Segues it really, really is. well into oh. I, I went to Cartagena, Colombia, a few years ago, and I and it was gorgeous, isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I, had a, I had a blast. We kind were, of weirdly, a lot like New Orleans, right? Because of the Spanish settlers. It is, yeah, yeah, and, the, and within that walled city and the great parties mm-hmm. and stuff, it was it was it was, a, it was a blast. We took a boat out, and it was like one of the most beautiful. It was it was beautiful. It's idyllic, yeah. yeah. It's very idyllic there, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, yeah, well, on the boat, they were like, "You're the pool boy king." Mm-hmm. Put a medal on you. <laughs> you got a little medal. <laughs> Yay! No one Senor, Col- Senor King. <laughs> no one in Colombia called me the Po Boy King. You don't know. They might have done it behind your back. It's Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Would you know? <laughs> Look, we got a lot more to talk about. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more Doughboys. Our next partner is Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. I gave AG1 a try because I want a better gut health, Wags. And and you know what else helps? Immune system support. Yeah, but uh, you you hate taking pills and vitamins, and you want a supplement that actually tastes great. Well, guess what, Wags? AG1 tastes great. Wow. I take it in the morning. I just put it in a big cup of water, stir it up, take it down. I got everything I need for the day in one cup. It makes me feel like Superman. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling healthy. Like I'm doing something good for my body. Like I'm giving my body the nutrition that it craves. It feels good. It's hard to keep up with a supplement routine that comes with a bunch of different products, but AG1 makes that so much easier. AG1 was designed with ease in mind so you can live healthier and better without having to do a lot. It's the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. AG1 is powerful because it's so easy to fit into your lifestyle. It's one scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. AG1 has been a part of millions of mornings since 2010. AG1 gives you increased energy and mood support, making it easy to live your best life. My AG1 is delivered to me every month, so it's been super easy to make it a daily habit. Comes right to my door, Wags. I also get the single-serving travel pack, so I never have to miss a day. I just mix the powder into ice-cold water and drink it first thing in the morning. That's it. With AG1, taking good care of my body each day is really that simple. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens gives you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and Five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash doughboys. That's athleticgreens.com slash doughboys. Check it out. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, Mitch, I think we both had those moments when we felt uncertain about where we were going in life. Are we really making the right decisions? Are we on the right path? Are we on the right track? Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. It's ambiguous. We don't know what to do. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career relationships or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Mitch, I benefited from therapy, as I believe you have as well. And, uh, you know, it's a great experience, I think, for people who just need somebody to talk to. Wags, it's true for me as well. Anytime I'm in therapy, I feel like a better person. I get the gunk out of my head out. I feel good. I talk it out. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Doughboys today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash Doughboys. Welcome back to Doughboys here with Stephanie Beatriz discussing Home State, which you wanted to talk about. Yes. This is a chain that you have a, a, a clearly a passion for Tex-Mex food, as you just said. And this is a, a place that you said catered your wedding. Is that correct? So wow. our wedding, my husband Brad and I. So earlier I mentioned that I used to have an eating disorder. When I met Brad, 
it was like mo- more like disordered eating. Like I just had like a lot of feelings around food and thoughts about food, sure. unhealthy thoughts about food, like ran my life. And then I kind of started like moving out of that. And then I met Brad and he loved to eat. And it was like going on dates with him was so awesome because all we did was like talk shit and eat all this delicious food that I had never really let myself indulge in. And there was definitely like, you know, like we were sort of, sort of like, Sometimes food's really sexy. And so, like, they're sitting across from someone that you, like, kind of want to bone. And you're, like, eating all this, like, food. And you're, like, ah, oh, this th- this is great. Oh. And so we wanted to take that feeling into our wedding. So we had all these food trucks. We had the Koji truck. We had Home State. We had wow. um, Mama Masubi's, the little oh yeah handball, hand uh, sushi balls. Um, we had a pizza truck. We had a food truck from Cleveland that had all this, like, Cleveland food. Uh, we had uh, what's the ice cream sandwiches? They have a truck. Pool House. Yeah, oh, Pool yes. House was oh, our dessert. Wow. Um, and we wanted to have like an extent, like an insane number of trucks because you know you've been to those weddings where they have like two trucks and you're in line for forty five minutes and you're fucking pissed off. Yeah. No, no waiting. Uh, so yeah, home state was. I mean, I'm really age. pissed off at a wedding, no matter what, <laughs> <laughs> but especially waiting for food. You would have been happy at mine because it was lit. That's a, that's a, that sounds incredible. It was pretty yeah, great. That sounds great. Food can be sexy, especially for you with the po' boy king. Yeah, the po' boy king. <laughs> <laughs> uh, home state is self-described as a Texas kitchen in Southern California. It was founded in 2013 by Brianna Valdez, who grew up in Texas. And also worked at Bouchon, Mitch, the oh, Thomas right. Keller restaurant. So wow. has like a fine dining pedigree. Uh, six locations in Southern California and growing. Uh, also offers rotating band tacos as collaborations with musicians. I was a little disoriented as to what band tacos were, even though I'd eaten here a number of times. Uh, and I actually, for this episode, I didn't realize we were going to get it day of. So I also went on my own. Nice. I went to the Playa del Rey location. Hmm. And I got a few. Uh, I got a few other tacos I didn't try today, but I got the. Uh, you know, I'll just say everything I had, and then we can also talk about what we had uh, right. with this particular meal. But I got the 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 Brazos. This is vegetarian. Black beans and Jack. Uh, the Comal. This is also vegetarian. Uh, this is eggs, black beans, and Jack. And then the potato taco, which is potatoes, cheddar, sour cream, guacamole, cabbage slaw, pico de gallo, pickled jalapenos. A lot of components there. Also got a, a vegetarian Frito pie in a bag. And a little queso and chips. I do like that they have the little queso. Little queso. Your solo diner. It's a cute little cup. It's not too much. And it works as a little little side piece with your mains. Uh, and an and ice summer tea. And you get to say little, 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 little <laughs> queso. It's L-I-L apostrophe. Yeah. Sounds like you had a lot of jacks during your meal there. All right. <laughs> he said jack a lot. And he's a guy who loves to jack off. Got it. Got it. Got it. And she gets it. That's where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Talking about tacos, jacking off. Yeah, <laughs> baby, I've made it. It's the height of my career right here. Let me just remember this moment. <sighs> Let's sink in. <laughs> I can't believe that you're also coming on to, not to promote anything either. <laughs> you're just coming on the show to come on the show? Hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you get them all on flour tortillas? or so, did yes. you get? So here's the thing. I generally prefer a corn tortilla. But this place does fresh house-made flour tortillas. And I understand, as a lifelong Southern Californian, that the approach with Tex-Mex is a flour tortilla primarily. That's yes? right. And so I, I like anytime I go to home state, anytime I've been in the past, I get flour tortilla. I did get one corn tortilla just to, just to compare today. Um, but yeah, the, the, the flour is the money tortilla at this oh, particular it's so good. place. It's good, yeah. I don't, it's I, so fresh. I'm a so flour fluffy. over. How, where do you stand on this? It depends on the place. I yeah. think I agree that for home state, I think... Flowers where it's at, they're handmade, they're made fresh every day. I could eat a stack of 12 of them by myself. I fooled you guys into ordering me a dozen tortillas, pretending like I was going to share them, but I'm taking them home. <laughs> <laughs> they're so fucking good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if I'm eating like Mexican, Mexican, like off of a truck Mexican, I want the tiny little, mm. almost holds mm. nothing, but is the perfect size corn tortilla. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's fair. I, I, I love Situation. flour. It, it does make me feel like. It does feel very much like a white person thing to be like, I want the flour tortilla always. 100%. And it, it, but, but it's okay. I, You're I, white. I, <laughs> it's true. I like it. I can't, I can't help myself. I, I, I do think that you're right though. When, when you are in a taco truck and it, 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 there, there are perfect scenarios where you do want that mm-hmm. corn tortilla. And like also when I've gone to Guasados, I'm like, yeah, kind of always want. Gotta yeah, I mean, the they only tortilla. have the corn yeah, tortilla, yeah, yeah. right? That's all you can. That's all you can get. If so. it's fresh, that's like always like whatever's yeah. fresh. I will always try yeah. a ball. Like because you know it's it's the the fresh corn versus flour in a bag. I mean, that's a no brainer for yeah. me. 
Um, if they're both in a bag, you know, whatever. I guess I, I generally prefer corn. Uh, but it, it 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 they have their place, and I think the flour tortillas here are great, and that's a big part of what's. I I don't know. It's like. I, I, I'm sure you have you Stephanie. You have strong takes on this yes, place, but I but do. but I, I I as not having a, a great sense of authentic, you know, what qualifies as authentic Tex Mex. I will just say like they seem to have put thought into every component mm-hmm. on all of these menu items, mm-hmm. and uh, and you know like that that absolutely like carries over in their experience. I think for me, like real Tex Mex is is about ingredients mm-hmm. and cheese. And, yeah. like, the queso is such a big part of Tex-Mex. Like, in things, on things, by itself, dippable, addable. And then the flour tortillas are a big part of it. Um, I think the the salsas, the varying salsas that they have are, like, just right. Sure. Um, and then, honestly, like, refried beans and red meat. Like, both of those are also a big part of Tex-Mex for me. Yeah, and they they do the they it, the beans here are great just in general. My funny my my trajectory with homestay was that I didn't like it the first couple times I had it, and not hold on hold on a second hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on. I've I've, I've grown. You don't have the same reaction to Encanto. <laughs> I, but more so because I was just like, what is what is this what place? The hell? And I, I didn't. I, I, it's not, I've never seen this in Quincy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Quincy, we don't have these. <laughs> Michael, they're opening a home state. <laughs> <laughs> it's replacing Grumpy Whites, that actual restaurant that was in Quincy. Grumpy Whites. No way. Here's the thing about Grumpy Whites is that Chank and. <laughs> It was good. Grumpy White's was good. It was my it was my nana's favorite restaurant. Oh, Grumpy that's White's. really sweet. And we drove by it and yeah, Wagner possibly racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, we drove by and Wagner was like, "Hey, a restaurant named after you," because it was Grumpy White's. <laughs> and, and then you cried a single tear thinking I, about your nana. I, I, mean, I, 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 I did make me think about my yeah. nana. But it's also the I'll see if I can find you, Grumpy White himself. Um, he but was a real guy. He wasn't a real guy, but he was a, the mascot okay, for the restaurant. Okay. But they had they had a great they had they had a great um, oh god the, the the text to talk thing went up they, yeah. they they had a they had a great buffalo chicken sandwich and a great chicken parm sandwich oh wait was Grumpy real oh my god was Grumpy real I think Grumpy was real this just made wow. me think of when I lived in Brooklyn there was this old man named Whitey who would sit on his stoop. And then when he couldn't get down the steps anymore, I think his like daughter in law or somebody would bring him down, and he would just sit out there. He had no teeth, and he would just like catcall you. Yeah, like as you walked to the subway, wow. he would just catcall the shit out of you, but in like the nicest way. <laughs> and I lived there for like four years, so like by the end, I was like buddies with him. And yeah, I'd be like, yeah. hey, why? He'd be like, hey, sweetie, you look great. Your skirt's not tight enough today, but you look good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. I wouldn't have taken it from anybody else, but he was so sweet. Grumpy White is probably similar, is my guess. Uh, that's that's that was him on the sign. There. That's adorable. And but then I do think Family that maybe style. He, he was. I think he maybe was because then there's this picture here. So that maybe that was that Grumpy White. That might have been him. Like that might have be. been him. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, dox him or whatever. Right. Um, but <laughs> photo was taken to the Capitol. <laughs> The photo was not taken at the Capitol steps. No, uh... I was there. I didn't see Grumpy White. <laughs> <at all. laughs> oh boy, me and my comedy crew. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, me, and, me, and, me and a buddy of mine did a couple sketches on the steps. <laughs> um, they weren't well received. It was so strange. <sighs> Uh, let's let's talk about some of the stuff we had today. So is that, that was based a lot of what of what my order was. I'll talk about those in a second. But uh, but you know we we got a bunch of different things. Stephanie, was this your regular order? Sadly, yes, <laughs> it that, was. That's a it's a great order. I yes. I was thinking about because I've done like breakfast there and I've gotten like five tacos. I've gone way too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you want to go hard because you think like, well, it's a little taco. It's a little but they taco. Stuff those fuckers full of stuff. They, they stuff them full. They they they, yeah. they they catch up on you quicker than you think. Yeah. My trajectory was I, I I got like the bacon, like potato, egg, and cheese one. And I do think that's good, and I now do still get it. But I was like, what's the big deal? I've had like a better, you know, bacon, egg, and cheese taco before. Yeah. 
But then, man, is this once the I Trinity, s- the one that also has potatoes in it? The Trinity, yes, yeah, okay. is correct. That, and so, but once I get onto the Neches taco, I'm saying it. I'm fucking butchering oh, that. That was good. I was trying the Neches taco. Well, I just want you to read that. What's in there? I'm, I'm losing. Oh, I see. I see in the description. Uh, this is the uh, the pasture raised eggs, refried charo beans, and cheddar, and then the the, the beans. And I like that they have you know because I don't I don't eat pork. Uh, but they have a they have a black beans option, which is basically available for everything. Uh, yeah. But their charo beans, which are their their like signature, their default, they have is pinto beans, bacon, and Monterey Jack. And that's where I was like, I've heard they're fucking great. So that's that's where I was like, oh, I'm like, <laughs> there it is, right? Now I get it. And also, I probably didn't get Tex Mex just in general. I, I, I I've never, but we've had torchies, and I've had some Tex Mex. But I was like, when I was like, oh, it's so about. This sort of thing, and yeah. then one hundred. I didn't, and I didn't order the brisket the first couple times with the eggs because I was like, "That's strange." And now I love the brisket with the eggs. Like, uh, there's, a, I, I came around big time to where I now love this place. I think this place is great. I think it's a, I think it's, it's. It, I'm being sincere. I think it is a great, I'm listening, great, great restaurant. Yeah, no, that's and the truth. You are telling the truth. My fear is. Is it going to expand? Because it's there, it's, it's there already it's, is expanding. There's one in Oceanside that's just opened up. So uh, like you know that's it's and that's pretty far afield from L. A. So that's, yeah. that's closer to San Diego. But it's still it's the it really is the fresh ingredients that makes home yes. state really what it is. Their ingredients are super high quality. I think if it were to expand like nationwide, that would be the thing that they would have to stick to would be like the quality of the ingredients because that's what sort of sets them apart, I think, from other places. We talk about right. this a lot, but do you remember, you, I mean, I'm sure you remember, you know, you know Umami Burger, Umami yeah. Burger. Uh, and we've talked about that when they yeah. expanded, yeah. it went poorly, and then now like, I, they're still open, but like, it, it, it feels like a shell of its former self. I've had I good experience. I used to love it. Yeah. I used to love it. When I lived in Los Feliz, I would go there. It was like special to go there. And oh, then, 100%. And then, yeah, that, that magic is gone. Not saying that it can't be good still. But do no, you still no, yeah. go wags or? Well, they, the first off, they over they over expanded a little bit, mm. but I think they've made some corrections. There was a there was a chef there for a time who was a Doughboys listener who wrote into us, yes. uh, who talked about how they'd made a bunch of changes to their menu, and I think that was before the last time we reviewed it. Yeah. And I think the last time we went, I think I had a more positive experience and what had been subsequently. Like I, I think they they've they've kind of gone they've, up and down. They, they, but, but, but that your, your damage, key point is right. The the, 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 the damage yes. from from expanding. But That's and I'm the like, danger. will home state do that? That's my kind of my fear. I don't of it, think but it's, so. It's still kind of it's still pretty small. It's just in California. Yeah. yeah. I think Stephanie's right because the thing that happens now is that there's companies like Fran Smart that exist to take local chains and franchise them nationwide. That's what like halal guys did. That's what Dave's hot chicken. I thought did. you were talking about yeah. my union president. Fran Smart. <laughs> Mitch, that was good. Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> Michael. Uh, <laughs> But if they're remaining like locally owned and they're they're still like you know being really particular about how many change th- how many locations they're growing yeah. to that uh-huh. feels like they can control it. Yeah, they're very involved in the in the business. I feel like they're they're and it's too it's like Latina owned and operated. There's like nothing that I don't like about this. That's space. great. That's that that and they've expanded a bit. Like they were open just for breakfast. I think this is or like you know till like one p.m. Breakfast and lunch. Well, they had that one Hollywood spot at first, and then yeah. everybody was going there, and then they started opening more places, and it felt like things sort of like evened out, and they were able to handle more. But still, sometimes on the weekend in Highland Park, like you can't you, you can't, can't order it. delivery. Yeah. Like you yeah. gotta go go stand in the line. Oh, the Playa del Rey one is it's like in a business park. It's like by I'm like IMAX headquarters and Meta headquarters. It's like a weird sort of space. Ooh. But I went on a Sunday. It was fucking hot. Back a lacking. Yeah, yeah, people were still going out there. And. Poor people in the business park seeing your fucking falling down ass walking through there. I'd be terrified. <laughs> Have you had their like margaritas and stuff? Their palomas? And no, margaritas? I haven't had any of their alcohol. Is it good? Really good. Yeah. Did uh, I say falling down? You said falling down. I said falling, falling down. down. No, you're you're correct. Okay, good. Referencing <laughs> the Michael Douglas movie where he goes into killing spray. Yeah, sorry. sorry about me. Yeah, you were correct. Uh, okay, so here's your order, Stephanie, uh, and correct me if I get anything wrong. Yes. Uh, the Frio, the Tijuana Panther, mm-hmm. a big queso, dozen tortillas. Uh, which you specified were for sharing. Oh, <laughs> Lied to my teeth. And the Frito pie in a bag, uh, which is a brisket chili, queso, pickled onions, and no lettuce, no tomatoes, no sour cream, no pickled jalapeno. Okay, so here is the only issue that I have with home state. Mm-hmm. I am from Texas. Frito pie mm-hmm. is what that would make you at a football game. You would go to the little 
concession stand, you'd order a Frito pie, and they would cut the top off the bag of Fritos, dump in Hormel chili, pump, pump, pump the like gooey, ooey nacho cheese, and that was the Frito pie. Maybe if it was fancy place, you'd get shredded cheese out of the bag. That's it. That's all a Frito pie should be. The fact that Home State adds lettuce and tomato and onion, although I like their pickled onion and jalapenos, it's yeah. too, it's too, it's too, much. it's too fancy. It's too, it's too it's, rich for my blood. It's Uga a pachka, lot. perhaps. Perhaps too many components. I had it, it with be. all that stuff, and I'm, and I'm, look, I'm not a Texan, it. so I don't. I, I, I did like it, but it is. I will say, like, you got to, you do have to work through some lettuce. There yeah, is. Yeah, I like, don't want to work through my lettuce. I, yeah. I want to like get into the brisket mm. and the. I think you're right. Fritos, I think there's there's a little too much. Uh, maybe even just pulling out the, the lettuce, lilies, yeah. if you will. Yeah. You the know? lettuce and tomato being gone, I think is is. I think if you did the onion and the jalapeno, you'd be fine. That's what I'm saying. The yeah. jalapeno is a little much for me, but uh, yeah, yeah. I do so, like those pickled onions a lot. They're those pickled so onions good. Are a lot of they're oh, really the pickled good. Pickled onions are so good, and they sell them as a side. You just, do you describe like a Friday night's li- not Friday night lights? Friday night, uh, Friday night lights. I go. <laughs> you just got like a Friday Night Lights scenario. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh my god, that was like all my. And listen, I was like not cool in high school. Like I was straight edge. I wore jinkos. I had arms full of bracelets. I like had super short hair. But yes, I was we, cool. We would the all po boy king. <laughs> the po boy king. No, but we'd all cool. go to football games, and like yeah. that was just part of like the life. Like you'd go to football games, you'd hang out, you'd like you know hang out on the bleachers and let the dude that you liked like accidentally touch your boob with his elbow and like oh, not yeah. move. You know what I mean? I still like, like that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it was my move. <laughs> um, but yeah, you that that was that was part of life. There was like in being being. It's so American. It's such an Amer. I grew up in such an American environment. Right. You know. But I do remember that specifically when a lady sees, when a lady sees me whip my elbows out. She knows what I'm Ooh, trying to do. She gets a little sugar <laughs> rubbing down her spine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, I have, but I have the specific thing, like you know, because I I went to high school football games in the marching band. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had a uh, so it was cool, and they had a marching band. Side note: the horniest of the horny guys, like they were the the marching band in my school was like everyone was having sex. Music department's very horny, very horny. Yeah. This guys, fucking. They touch on that in American Pie. This guy fucking slays over here. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Elbows everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, you and the Michael Douglas falling down sense. <laughs> so, so I but a Fredo Pie specifically, I I, I connect to, to Friday night football games. Like a same exact same thing. A big fucking crock pot of chili, another one of like nacho cheese, and then just ladling yep. that into a bag of Fritos. Yep. Yeah. Wait, did you wait, wait? Wait, what? You 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 were eating Frito pies too? I'm saying that was my introduction to them, and is oh. that they used to be at like at football, football games, games at Long Beach yeah. Poly High. Oh, really? Yeah, they, yeah. I didn't realize that they did in California too. I mean, think yeah. about the markup on it on a Frito pie, like, especially if the chili and cheese are bad. Yeah, like who? You're, 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 really... you're doing pretty good for yourself. Yeah. That's what is, this is not your life. What is the what is the Friday Night Lies line? Oh. Fr- fuck! I shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> The follow about... through was really bad on that one. <laughs> Stop trying to talk you about it. You can cut it out. You can cut it out. You can cut it out. I've oh. seen the movie. I saw it. I mean, my my, uh, th- there was no experience like that. After the football game, we get a hot dog. That's fun. We were one in eleven my mm-hmm. senior year. Oh. Yeah, and we I was one of the worst players in North Quincy football uh, football history, and I would but we would get a hot dog at the end of the game, which is always very fun. I like the way you said dog. hot dog. Yeah, I t- I talk like a fool because I'm from Boston. Like the, the, hot thank dog. you. But a free, a free hot dog at the end of the game. But no free. I didn't even know what a Frito pie was until probably maybe home state. Really? Honestly. Yeah. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Uh, the 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 Frio taco which you got is uh, is the refried beans and mm-hmm. and the Monterey Jack a and delight. then the Tijuana Panther is a, a band um, taco. Yeah, it's it's a band apparently. Yeah, it's yeah shredded band. Uh, shredded brisket, queso, crispy potatoes, and pico de gallo. Uh, and I got I got the Chicano Batman, which is a, a soy dillo, crispy potatoes. Uh, or is it soy dio uh, at guacamole and salsa verde, and then also the emos. Those are both vegetarian. You can get them vegan, and that one's black beans, guacamole, cabbage slaw, pickled red onions. Uh, all delightful. I mean, I will say that this is like I expect this from a Mexican place, and and I try to eat less meat these days generally, and and that's partly why I went this direction, even though I've had you know their brisket in the past, um, uh, and, and some of their other proteins in the past. I, I want them to be able to do like good Mexican food because it feels mm-hmm. like you can with all those components. And this place absolutely delivers. Like it's a great indulgent experience for someone who doesn't eat meat. And I think with some of the options that you can get vegan, I think even if you're a vegan, I think you could have a nice time. At, Agreed. At a, Agreed. At a, uh, 
a home state. I'm looking up, looking up I'm looking up the Friday Night Lights quotes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Mitch, you got What a, is a famous quote? Hmm. You this... also got a Tijuana Panther. You got a, 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 a Picadillo uh, taco or Picadillo cut taco, which is beef, potatoes, carrots, cabbage slaw, and pickled jalapenos. And this is you not your life as a song by Train. The Neches, which you mentioned. Yeah, the Neches. The I I love that Neches taco. I always every time I go there, I get it. Uh, I will also I'll get the the brisket. But I, this is the first time I had. Is it is it called the the Panther? What is it called? Tijuana, Tijuana Panther. Panther. Tijuana Panther. I that's and I liked it quite it's a, a bit. It's a delight. You know, it's it even better if you add the a little of the little queso. I should have done yeah. that. I'm yeah. a fool. I didn't do it. But I, you didn't see me with that big queso dripping everything all over my. Face. <laughs> I was like. Ugh. I love that. So they 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 have a a, a red sauce and a, 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 a verde. Jesus, mm-hmm. I couldn't think of verde. A verde sauce. Verde. Ver, verde. That was pretty good. That was pretty verde. good. Verde. 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 Yeah. They have a verde. Oh god, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna try it again. But I did, the menu gotta... does for in all fairness, the menu just does says green salsa. Fuck. So you can say green salsa. I didn't have to do any of this. I made a fool Greg, of myself. Greg and Ellen, why don't you make a little little drop of, of <laughs> <laughs> that verde, verde, verde. <laughs> that drop was perfect. Now let's make a child together. That's <laughs> what I imagine. They set down their glasses of white wine. He puts his elbow right on her tip. <laughs> That's... The old That's elbow on the tip. No better way to start things. <laughs> get things going. Man, when I was 16, that was the move, though. I'm sure. That oh, of it. course. An accidental, accidental touching. Well, me, no. Personally, I don't remember it. I wish. <laughs> uh, but You're elbowing your own. <laughs> Listen. Listen. I was, I was up going to the hot dogs after the game. <laughs> hot dogs. <laughs> Birdie hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not elbowing my own tip. I can't even do that. Can't even do that. Why? Can't even do it. Uh, Casey, you had a few items. Uh, d- any thoughts on yours? Trinity, a pecos, a tepache? Uh, yeah. Uh, I usually eat breakfast tacos when I go to home state, and I got I a couple move, of my yeah. favorites. Yeah. Uh, they were great. Uh, and I, I got this the tepache, which is what I've been drinking. Uh, it's pretty good. Never had this before. It's like a Probiotic. pineapple spice. Yeah. Probiotic. Yeah, really they good. Have, they do have a lot of great, you know, they have alcohol, but they also have a lot of great uh, non-alcoholic drinks. Yes, I got a Mexican Coke because it's the real sugar Coke, which is, there's a real difference, I think, between For the sure. regular Coke and the Mexican Coke. I agree with that, but you know what? Oh, what? You know what? I've gotten myself in so much trouble. What am what? I doing? Just go ahead. I like, I think can of Coke is my favorite You love the of, can of Coke. I think can of Coke is you know, my, my favorite. You know, my dad word. really loved the can of Coke, too. There was something, he said there was something about the way that it tasted it's in just, the can. We we've talked about this before, but McDonald's fountain coke is maybe the thing that beats it for me. Well, That's you about... know that they have a special recipe, oh, special canister. Yeah. They got they got. We're losers. there's more sugar we, in their coke. Oh yeah, they, they they got they have specialized canisters for yeah. for the McDonald's coke. Yeah. We I think we've done an episode about this. I did. I should have warned you how stupid the show no, was before the, you came. I'm on. involved in the conversation here. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what <laughs> chumps you guys have it. coming on this show, but I'm into food. I like it. <laughs> I like to eat it. There was a long time when I didn't <sighs> like it, and it like it's so joyful for me to ex- talk about food in this way. It's very healing. So well, thank you guys. That is that is that is great. That yeah. and that is a, we, we've talked about it before. I, I sometimes indulge too much in it, I, I, Nick, as I'm sure you feel the same way sometimes. For sure, but, yeah. But, uh, but I think it's our, and this is maybe not a good thing, I think it's our greatest pleasure. I think it's an amazing pleasure. Yeah. Food is such an incredible... <sighs> it should, should it be number one? Because it is not, it might be number not, one I mean, for a lot me. of is times it's way more satisfying than sex. It That's... just is. Like, with sex, I think you have to, like, you either have to be real into the kink and a specific type of kink that like just does it for you right away. Yeah. Or you got to be really into the person that you're with. And that can be That's... tricky, especially when you're still dating or when you're married. Right. 100%. Either way. A hundred percent. But food, food is Food's often. always mostly good. Even mostly, when it's bad, even it's good. Even when it's bad, well, you know. But when it's really good, it's. Otherworldly. I don't. I've like cried. That, I've no cried pressure, yeah. sometimes, like at meals. Oh yeah. Like when we were in Japan for our honeymoon, there were multiple meals where, like, oh, I was man. crying. Wow. Crying because it was so good. Wait, can you give us one example? Well, I'll give you one here in LA that you should go to. Q Sushi. Remember okay. That place? No, I, I haven't. Bad. They only seat like six people a night. It's basically like what he omakase, like so what he wants yeah. to give you. But I have 
twice I've sat at that counter and like tears have rolled out of my eyes, like uncontrollably. Like that part in Spirited Away when she eats the onigiri oh, and oh, yeah. like yeah. tears come out of her eyes. That's how I felt. I was like, bleh, bleh, bleh. like I had no other way to express how I felt. I was just so full of gratitude and like Fuck. moved by the food, you know, like, and I just wanted to eat, 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 eat. Like it was so like I love food. That's I want. I I, I want. You gotta go I there. Gotta try this you gotta place. go there. It's awesome. Bitch, you seen Spirited Away? I have. Yeah. So you will watch an animated movie. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. <laughs> right in the face. <laughs> <sighs> I'll watch it if it's non-singing. That's what he's saying. Mm, no no music in it. I'm watching Encanto. I'm gonna you watch, watch it. it. I'm, I'm very excited to watch it. I'll watch it, it with you. I look. There's. Let's tons watch it of, right now. There's tons of classics. <laughs> this right, is, we just this is actually a video. This is a TV screen. <laughs> um, there, look, there's a plenty of classics I haven't I haven't seen. So really? and that's and that's one of them. Yeah, I haven't seen there. Like they're... Disney classics that you haven't seen? Oh, yeah. You know, I haven't seen I, I haven't seen some Disney classics. I've ne- I have never seen Princess and the Frog. I got to see that. That was like I was older at that. That's point. Great. And I got like a lot of the ones that I was older. Yeah, I haven't seen. I am afraid to list them because it makes me sound like I'm a white Come guy on, who refuses to see. It makes me sound like, like, but like Princess and the Frog, and I don't think I saw Mulan. I was old. I was an older kid. You didn't see Mulan? No, 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 no I don't Mulan's think so. A lot of fun. Yeah, oh I gotta see. God. I gotta. See, there's a few I gotta see, and that's from the days when I loved Disney stuff too. But um, look, I've embarrassed myself too much here. But You're I want to get back to a quote of. Uh, Friday Night like, Lights, because you looked it up. No, I actually I never <laughs> found it. But when people say like. Like pizza's like sex, even when it's bad, it's good. I'm like, that's not true. Not true now. It's not true. Pizza, I'll give it to pizza, even if it's bad. I'm like, eh, eh st- bad pizza, fucking. Suck. Bad pizza bad does can suck. Fuck your brain. Up. I know that's you the other thing. Like, that's what oh, I'm saying. It's like neither. Of, that's not true. Yeah. That's just not a not true, true saying. Either. It's a bad saying. It's neither- only true about the Herald. <laughs> As Turner Halpern said. The Herald. Oh, he sucks. <laughs> he Who's sucks. That? Who's the Herald? <laughs> the Herald is an, an improv. It's long form. It's improv. an improv it's... form, and Sharna Halpern wrote this book, uh, Truth and Comedy. And in the book, she says she uses, she says the Herald is like pizza and sex. When it's bad, it's still pretty good, huh. which is the least true of improv comedy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the least true of all three of, all of those. Three of them. Yeah, yeah. Can the I tell worst. you something? Yeah. I have a really hard time watching improv comedy. Yeah, hey, like, I've I've done improv comedy. I can't watch improv I comedy. Have a real, like I like I sometimes I cringe so hard, like it feels like I'm gonna throw out my yeah. neck. Like it's really hard for me to watch. Oh, I don't think you've seen many scenes with the po' boy. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have. Welcome to po' boy, kid. Po boy. What, what would you like on your po' boy? <laughs> I won't do that. I'm sorry. Uh, we gotta take one more break. We'll be right back with our fork scores right after this. Mitch, do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to $200. Well, well, yeah, let me look at, hey, let me look at some, $5 a month to Patreon.com for Doughboys? What am I doing? Oh, man, you're getting ripped off. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money. Rising prices stressing you out? If you're looking for ways to cut costs, you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app you just use one show, or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you and for any you don't want to pay for anymore. Just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorize your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Wow. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash doughboys. That's rocketmoney.com slash doughboys. Rocketmoney.com slash doughboys. Welcome back to Doughboys. It's time for our fork scores for home state. So, Stephanie, here's how this will work. We will each go around, uh, give a closing argument, if you will, like sort of a, a summation of your thoughts on this chain based on this experience, based on a lifetime of experiences, and end that by giving it a score from zero to five forks. Five is the highest. Five, five. Is, is our platinum play club. 
Okay. Yes. So and if it's okay. four or above, it's Golden Play Club. Right. Okay. But we're gonna let you start. We'll let you. We'll let you begin okay. as you are the guest. Okay. Tell me again. Uh, so I have to f- summarize my experience. Yeah, just kind of give an restaurant. overall like like assessment, like closing argument about this chain, and then give it a fork score. Okay. So beyond the the values of the of the business, which I think are really high, they treat everyone that works there really well. Mm. Um, again, Latina owned. Uh, beyond that part, which I really love supporting a small business that has basically grown from her dreams. I just think the food is always solid. It's always, always, always exactly what is on the menu. That's what you're going to get. It's always like the ingredients are really, really high quality. You can just tell that every single ingredient they care. I love the size of the tacos. They always feel like like they're wrapped in foil and they have this little washi tape on them that yeah. usually has like the name of the taco printed on it. And when you get it out of the bag, it just feels like a little warm, delightful present that yes. you're going to get to unwrap. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, because it's attached to some of my personal happiest memories and because it reminds me of my home state, I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. Five, five forks. forks. Wow. Wow. I think it's a good score. I think what you said about the tacos being stuffed, even though they're tiny, being stuffed with, you know, like filled to the brim with eggs and cheese and beans. And 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 honestly, you could eat two of them and be good. I've eaten five of them, too. But why? Well, because I didn't even talk about everything. I got a cool down drink. This is a cool down. It was great. It was like a it was like a Topo Chico and, and some like lemon and lime. It was fantastic. Spritzer. It was it was it was like a, it was a delicious spritzer. It would have been great in. The Bayou, if you drank mm-hmm. it down there, it would have cooled you down a little bit. Yep. Say you're some sort of po' boy king, the bayou. <laughs> right? And you need to cool down. That yeah. would be that would that it was it was great. And and I've seen them get bigger, like not saying expansion wise, but like you've seen I've seen them uh, expand their menu a little bit, try new things, and they always kind of knock it out of the park. Uh, the Neches taco was good. I had the I had the Picadillo taco as well. Which was uh, I also had the Tijuana Panther. The the Picadillo was good. It was I think it's ground meat and some slaw. Yes. Uh, tasty, tasty taco. I had a, the the what is it called? Fritos in a bag. What is the hell is it? Frito, Frito pie. pie. Frito pie. Fritos in a bag. That's, that's just Fritos. Birdie. <laughs> <laughs> <That's... laughs> oh fuck. Um, but this place has really come around on me to the point where. I think it's special too. And I'm not just saying this because I'm trying to win good favor. I think it's a five forker wise. Wow. How can it not be a five forker? How could it not be? Well, it falls to me to decide. <laughs> Look, I think like there's like there's some stuff of like the power. It's true. Here <laughs> I'm the gatekeeper at this in this particular scenario. Do I wish there was like one Extra salsa to dip your chips in besides the red and green, maybe. Interesting mm. feedback you could give them that they probably would respond to. That's that is true. And, and you know what? I may I might they might have pico de pico de gallo. They might have an option like that that I don't know about. I mean they have pico de gallo on some of their uh tacos. So I'm sure so that you could probably get a side, get, yeah. get a side yeah. of it. And it's that sort of thing. And now that they've expanded a little bit, and I know my fear is of them expanding more and, and losing the kind of magic that they have. Restaurant business is hard. Why? Because I was back in Quincy. Wu owns a restaurant. My godfather's son, yeah. Neil, my god brother owns a restaurant, Fat Cat. He made the best wings ever. We were we went to Costa Rica. Yeah. And he and he and we got some wings on there called Roja Wings, which they they basically red wine vinegar was like a part of it in hot sauce. And Neil did like his version of them at the Fat Cat, and it was the best wing no. I've ever had. Roja wow. wings. He's got to put them on the menu. Had a great meal at Townsend too. I got to give a couple of shout outs because we just talked about Crumpy White. It's Townsend, great meal Townsend. in Townsend and Quincy. But having a restaurant like that is it's not easy. And then having multiple locations where it seems like the quality control, like you're saying, is 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 top of the line. That's a hard thing to do. I think it's a five. I think it's a five forker. Five forks. Wow. I think that. You, well, we'll see what you do. Uh, while you're giving shout outs, I want to shout out a, uh, a, a listener I met named Jesse today on the picket line. Uh, oh, wow. It was out when we, where we were talking, and, I didn't, and then I, he told me he was a listener after we had a little bit of conversation, which was was nice. But he was talking about a sandwich shop that's over on in Culver uh, called uh, Monroe Place. And it was mm. just like, oh, this is like the hot, the hot new sandwich shop. And there was a time when Homestate was like, oh, this is the new cool new. L.A. restaurant. This yeah. is the hot new, pl- new spot. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of times that happens and you either have the, you know, it, 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 hey, you could have the umami scenario. You can have the exaggerated version of that, the heightened version of that, the Pinkberry scenario, mm-hmm. where it was like, oh, this is this cool local thing that wildly overexpanded and loses all of its magic. Home state in the its 10 years of operation feels like it still like has that same level of quality uh, that you would have if you were trying it back in 2013. And I was particularly impressed when I went to the Playa del Rey location. And, you know, again, in an office park is the kind of one, if they were going to water down the experience a little bit, you might start to see it, the, the you know, the end start to fray there. But it wasn't. It was completely solid. It was like it was just like as executed as well as the home state we had today. Uh, I, I really like their their wide variety of, of vegetarian options. I think that's great. I really like that they have a, a really good version of Frito Pie on the menu because that's such a such a great indulgence for me. I'm thinking of this place in terms of like, you know, let's say we what Mitch, we because, you know, we go on the road and we review local spots. This is the kind of spot like if home state was in Portland and they had six locations, we went up yeah. to Portland, people were like you got to review home state. And like if I went there to a road show. And I was honestly assessing it. I wasn't trying to pander to an audience. I think I would still land at Five Forks. So welcome wow. to the Platinum Plate Club, home wow. state. Congratulations. Wow. The That's hallowed homies. halls. Not many. What do you think? At this point, 20 restaurants maybe. Still not a ton. Not a ton. That's... We've done fucking and some get ejected. 400 episodes. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do? Yeah. On a second try, they get ejected. Yeah. They, 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 they mean, get ejected for, for some bullshit, too, if they some, pull bullshit. Well, yeah. yeah. If they really pull bullshit, then bye. Yeah. 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 Political to, stuff. We, yeah. like, we like toss Bud Light out of the... <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Quincy folks proudly drink Bud Light uh, all day, every day. Bud Light. Um, uh, why? Well, I, I, I think it's. I think it deserves it. I want to say this. Yeah. I didn't say it. I do think I prefer breakfast there over lunch tacos. We didn't talk about that enough. Their yeah. breakfast is fucking Their breakfast, great. Their Their breakfast, breakfast tacos is are so good. good. The breakfast is great. Uh, that's interesting that you say that because I prefer a, a dinner situation. Wow. wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. You know, fair. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Marg. That's, they do have great cocktails great there. Cocktails. And like I said, I had a non-alcoholic cocktail, but great cocktails yeah. all around. Weiss, I met two listeners at the airport, Eric and Caroline, maybe Carolyn, but she she writes on hacks. Oh, that's awesome. I think Eric is a lawyer. I forgot, I forgot what Eric did, but I don't know. I, she was in my business, so I didn't give a shit about him. But <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's, 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 she's a writer on hacks. She's on the picket line. And they were both very uh, sweet, nice people. Yeah, I've met a number of, uh, of writers who are Doughboys listeners. Jesus. You wonder why we've exited the era of peak TV. <laughs> I remember some Brooklyn writers talking about Doughboys, I think, early early days. Well, the commissioner, Evan Susser, is, uh, is was a writer on, on Brooklyn. He's our commissioner. Uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of, uh, of, of our bullshit overlapped with that show. Uh, the, uh, David Phillips, who was a deli boy. Gore. Gore, Gore himself. Gore himself Gore. came on the show. Yeah. Oh, love, Gore. Gore. Yeah. love Gore. Love Gore. Love Gore. I love Gore too, bitch. <laughs> Freddy Krueger. <laughs> uh, hey, it's time for a segment. I've got some hot button food topics, and we'll be judge, jury, and executioner. Ooh. It's the return of food court, and this is food court ice cream edition, as curated by Amelia Marino, our associate producer. Oh my executioner? goodness! Executioner. I'm excited for this. That's tough to say. Because you chew ice cream, you know. Yeah, obviously, obviously, obviously. Uh, so I'll give a topic, and we'll all just sort of weigh in and try to render a verdict. Okay. Right, first topic. Like speed round style. Yeah, we'll just get through okay. a few of them. All right. Okay. First topic. You know where I stand. Chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Hell yeah. Chocolate ah. ice cream is fucking garbage. No argument. I, Taste closed. I love this. Taste <laughs> motherfucking closed. Uh, I'm, I, look, I've, I've, I've a long-standing advocate of the position that vanilla is a flavor. It's an exotic bean. Vanilla doesn't mean plain. Uh, vanilla itself is a is a delectable ice cream flavor. It's an exotic bean. Not only do you have to like stew the bean, you have to scrape the inside out of the bean to so get the flavor. Trouble. So much work involved. There's so much work involved. Yeah. Chocolate Just, ice cream, however, is like a agent. sad, pathetic, <laughs> watered down, <laughs> milk toasty version of the real thing. Chocolate. My aunt's gonna be like, so like the they killed Stu off between seasons <laughs> one and two. <laughs> I'm fucking up over here, Wags. Cho- I choose chocolate. Yeah, 
I like chocolate. I don't dislike what? vanilla. I, I don't gave, dislike chocolate. I gave him I a hard vanilla. time a long time ago because he's a boring man and he loves vanilla. So I thought it was funny. But vanilla is good. There's a Boston cooler drink my mom would make with ginger ale with a scoop of vanilla in it. Fantastic. Ooh, it's, it's a great drink. A great, I mean, uh, ice cream drink. It's great. I, I like vanilla. I, I do I also like love 15 I, mean jokes about white people <laughs> go through my head. <laughs> that Boston cooler. Boston cooler, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to say any of them. Okay, keep going. That uh, it does sound like, yeah, Mark Wahlberg yelled, like, put him in a Boston cooler. Yeah. It sounds like you probably did something like that Jesus at one point. Uh, <laughs> what? I didn't do it. I'm just saying, like, Mark it does. Mark Wahlberg did it, you guys. It, seems like, a, it, seems, like a ba- it seems like a bad thing. Yeah. I saw Mark Wahlberg on the Fox lot, and he said, hey, nice jacket. I was wearing a Red Sox jacket. So he's and always he was like, hey, how's your mother? Say hi to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next topic. Uh, vanilla chocolate. wins two one. I like chocolate. Soft serve or hard? Is that what you call non-soft serve? Hard <laughs> ice cream? Is it soft, soft serve or serve hard serve? Hard. <laughs> Amelia. No, this is a turn. I guess Hard. I guess if this goes against everything I stand for, but hard. Hard. <laughs> I'm gonna vote hard only because maybe someone will make a meme out of me going, I'm gonna vote hard. <laughs> uh it's unanimous. Next topic. Cup or cone? Cone. Cone. Look, I I get depends what he's I know no, I know what he's no, got. I'm gonna say cone. It depends on the cone. That's it does. the big thing. It does. I'd it rather does. have a cup than a, really? than a shitty cone. Those little shitty cones that come in the thing when yeah. they're like styrofoamy. No, that was I would my say nails more de- de- more than depends on the cone. I would take cone always, but I think it more for me depends on the scenario. Like I like cone is just hard to it's hard to travel with the cone. If you're driving, if I'm driving with the cone, you're driving and eating ice cream. I have done that before. It's tricky. What's tricky to eat with a fucking spoon in a cup if you're driving? Yes. What are you doing with that? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm like a style. fool. <laughs> I look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> you're telling me you don't like improv comedy? Is that what you that look great. like when you give a head? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's all I can see. Hop on into Po' Boy King's car. Let me drive it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, cone wins. So we have a, a subtopic: waffle Uh-oh, cone or waffle. wafer cone. Waffle cone. Waffle cone. Come, waffle on. Cone. Come on, come on. Yeah. Wafer cone. Hard. This one is. I've also known wafer cones as sugar cones. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we're thinking about the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one I think is a good one: mint chocolate chip, white or green. Green baby. Green. Give me that Kermit. What the fuck is even mint yeah, chocolate white. chip white? I'd be pissed. White mint chocolate chip. Why? Yes. Come on. I've had some good, good mint, chocolate mint chocolate chips. Like chips. the, like the. It's like it's you know if you go to sometimes like a, a some a designer fancy It's like a fancy somewhere. place. Yeah, it's this, like a yeah. fresh mint. That's not a. That's not thirty one flavors. Right. Baskin yeah. Robbins. That's fancy ass shit. Come I, on. Yeah, I that's think rich I, people shit. I get that. I'm still going white here. I think I'm white. <laughs> Do you remember white in the Muppet chip. movie? Do you remember the Muppet movie? Yeah. I, one of my favorite movies. Which one? The 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 original, the original? The Muppet movie. So Kermit. He gets like a fly ice cream, but it's green and it always looks so good. I know that it maybe is fly flavored, but it looks fantastic. Well, he's I, a frog. Well, he's a frog, yeah. yeah. So he would like it. But yeah. I'm saying like the actual ice cream in the movie looks looks so good. That is adorable to me that that's what you noticed as a kid. You were like, <laughs> that looks really good. I'm gonna try to find a picture of it. Please do. I'm also gonna try to find that quote. Please too. do. I remember. <laughs> you know what I remember from the Muppet movies? What's Jan- that? Hot Janice with the big lips. Yeah, Ooh. she was Man, hot. She was a babe. Yeah, she was. She definitely. Well, yeah. Miss Piggy also is pretty Miss Piggy hot. Piggy was cute, but she was a lot very high maintenance. Yeah. Janice was like, "I'll live in a locker at the airport. Like, I don't, <laughs> we don't need to be exclusive. It's cool." <laughs> <laughs> Nick, what Muppet would you, did you want to bone? Bone. So I kind of have, a, as I've talked about, that that's kind of like a, a, my pop culture blind spot. I don't have, didn't you know, consider not a lot of Muppet the Muppets. Man. I watch that's Muppet right. Babies. He's ne- he, he ne- he's ne- you still haven't seen Muppet movie. No, right? I've seen what, the Muppet the Muppet movies that I've seen. We've watched on the podcast. We watched Muppet Treasure Island, which I loved, oh, and wait, Muppet Christmas see, did, Carol, which see, I also liked. But you didn't see the Muppet movie yet. No, I haven't seen it. No, you gotta watch it. I gotta watch them all. I'm gonna watch oh, them the all. The Great Muppet Caper. The Great Muppet Caper is great. I Fantastic. have a pact with Griffin Newman of the Blank Check Podcast. He's going to watch all of the Despicable Me movies when I watch all of the Muppet movies. So we're both gonna carry They're out never. our end of the deal. 
<laughs> I'm going to do it. Nick has seen all the Despicable Me movies. He's gone alone to those as well, which is a good it. thing. It's a good I thing. It. I went alone to see Brie Larson in Room. Everyone has their tastes. Here's my issue with Room. I've said this before. The Room looked nice. The room was nice. The room didn't. No, I'm saying the room didn't look that bad. Well, she had to keep it nice. She was in there for like a long time. That's a good point. Yeah, she's keeping it tidy That's in there. That's all point. she had to yeah, do. I never thought of that. that. Was something the movie was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, this is a good one. Chocolate or rainbow sprinkles? Rainbow sprinkles. Chocolate sprinkles. This is why I would make a great director and producer because I make a decision fast and that's yeah. it. Yeah. And also, you know what? That looks better on screen. It the does. sprinkles. The, that is a great point. The rainbow sprinkles look better on screen. I I chocolate sprinkles for me. Um I like chocolate sprinkles. Rainbow sprinkles make me think of birthday flavor and mm. I love birthday flavor and I, anytime I kind of like kind of a celebration sort of dessert, that's mm -hmm. a treat for me. Mm -hmm. So I go rainbow. Uh okay. Really? This, yeah, I think so. Mint chocolate chip with Mint well, I'm not putting sprinkles, put sprinkles on, mint, on yeah. mint chocolate chip. I put texture this already. No. Mint chocolate chip with, we, well, the, in, well, I'm not going to get into this. Mint chocolate chip, they were called jimmies in Boston, and then there was questions of whether that was a racist term. It's not a racist term, mm -hmm. but they were, they, 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 that's what they call chocolate sprinkles at Brigham's. Yes. But you, I would put those on the mint chocolate chip ice cream. Chocolate sprinkles on mint chocolate chip? It was. I, I could see how that would be. It was my favorite. Yeah, that it was my would favorite. maybe be the it only worked. iteration that I would use them in. Yeah, and then the rainbow sprinkles. I'm like that. That to me is like, what ice cream does that work well with? Vanilla. Yeah. Ah, uh, fucking vanilla. Oh, yeah, Bubble gum. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Like fruity, a fruity yeah, flavor. Like a, like a. But chocolate sprinkles are my. Those are my, those are those. Are, those are, I think those are those. That for me works more. I'm more. But that makes sense. You guys are more. You guys are more vanilla we have leaning. A more refined palate, and you. <laughs> We'll just eat whatever chocolate fucking nonsense ice cream garbage. How did I get so scared? <laughs> this always You're happens to me. You're overthinking it. Your friend is here. Yeah, yeah your it's friend. true. It is true. It is yeah. true. I'm still looking up the Kermit ice cream. Have you played yeah, Disney Dreamlight it. Valley? I haven't, oh but I did God, a voice. Play. I know your voice. I saw your voice got added to it. Yeah. DLC. Yeah, it's fun. I've heard. Yeah. I've heard. It was a weird one though. Doing recording that one was weird because I was like. Explain to me what this is. They were like, it's its own world. And I was like, what? Like, I didn't know how to take direction for it, but hopefully it sounded okay. You play video games at all? Not really. It's a, so there's this game called Stardew Valley that was very popular. And it's kind of like a life slash farming slash building sim. So yeah. basically you live in a town and, and Dris Disney Dreamlight Valley is derivative of that, but it like has its own spin on it. It has all the, you know, Disney IP and characters. It's like a bunch of little magic like things that exactly, you can do yeah. and find. Yeah. So you go around, you know, you can fish, you can you know, you collect wood, you can collect fruit, you can cook, you know, it's like, it's, it's all the Pretty stuff that adorable. Animal Crossing is a better uh, yeah, animal. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all that sort of stuff, but it's a, uh, it's really well done. I never, in high school, uh, my job was to sit on the couch with all my dude friends and talk shit while they played the video game. Oh, sure. That yeah. was my job. That's fun. Yeah. And it was a good job. I liked that job. It was better to be, be that than the snack getter, which, you know, like I wasn't going to do. Did you I, find the picture? I think this is Fozzie holding Kermit's ice cream from the it movie. It looks like mint chocolate chip from far away. It which looks is like mint adorable. chocolate chip. It That's was, it adorable. looks like mint chocolate chip. It's a good moment. How am I flopping all around more when you're saying, have you ever played Disney Starlight Valley or whatever? Dreamlight Valley. Yeah, I'm Dreamlight a Valley. Disney heroine. That's I, why. I know it's true. We've had this but this is, man should be embarrassed is what I'm saying. This, this is, is now a triforce of Disney heroines we've had on the show. Uh, we had Sarah Silverman, Vanellope. Princess, wow. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Cristela Alonso, uh, Cruz Ramirez from Cars 3. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, it, 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 now it's, it, we're completing the trilogy. It's unbelievable. Yeah. The father, son, and me, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Poof, I disappear. And I'm kind of like the visual representation for, uh, what's his name, Big Pete? Who's uh, who, who's the guy who's Kerm uh, Kermit? <laughs> Sully from Monsters, Inc.? Is that who you're thinking of? Uh, <laughs> Big Pete, you know. Big the Pete. Fat Pete, I think his name is, the, the guy who's Oh, like, I know what you mean, yeah. The Mickey's, it's Mickey's, Mickey's, Mickey's Mickey. rival. Rival. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, his name's not Pete. Is it not Pete? No, I what think is it's his Pete. name? I'm pretty sure. No, it's, it's something Pete. else. I think it's Pete. Slim. Uh, no, is it Pete? Disney Mickey. Oh boy, Pete. Pete? <laughs> <laughs> there is a Pete, and I think he's just called Pete. Is it just? Is I it think it was big Fat guy? Pete at some he's point. A big I think dude. they removed Fat. Yeah, it is him. This guy, right? Yeah, that's who I'm talking that's about. Pete. 
That's yeah. Pete. Yeah. Oh, he's so mean. He's such a mean guy. Yeah, he's a jerk. You could rock this wardrobe, though, man. You really could. <laughs> You'd look great in that sweater. A bowler's cap make... and a sweater. <laughs> You'd be surprised. He's my style. I think he might be, be my surprised. style. The icon. This right. fat Pete. We got a few more here. Uh, <laughs> unusual flavors or stick to the basics? Hmm. Stick to the basics. Stick to the basics. Though, you you saying bubblegum ice cream made me want to have some bubblegum ice cream. Bubblegum ice cream, is, if done right, it's, it's delicious. Also, like, I like a cheesecake sometimes or, like, a weird, like... Who does the one? There's a place here in LA that does the one that's like goat cheese with like oh yeah these, cer- these certain berries that you can only get at a certain time of year. I'm gonna go with like fancy flavors sometimes. I think they're really fun. What's your fa- what's your favorite the fancy ice cream shops? Are you a uh, Van Leeuwen? Yeah, you got your Jenny's, name you got your Salt and Straws. I love Jenny's. I love Jenny's. I like you got Jenny's your, uh, too. Salt and Straws okay. Sweet Rose Creamery. I'm a regular forest. I love Jenny. I love Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite movies growing up. I, I loved it. It's they've gotten some like backlash now because people are like it's I'm bad. singing a song here. I yeah. love that movie. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I like Forest. And I like, you know what? I like Bubba Gump as well. We did have a good time at the Bubble Gump Sherman Company. Did you go? Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah. It's great. It's uh, a good time. Uh, I would eat there. Yeah, by episode four hundred and seventeen, we've reviewed <laughs> Bubba Gump <laughs> Sherman Company. <laughs> uh, all right. Toppings galore or none. Mm. I'd rather go none. I'd rather go none too. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if those are our options, like too many toppings or zero toppings, I guess I'm going zero, zero toppings. Zero toppings, mm. yeah. Uh, ice cream that's been left in the freezer for an extended period of time with freezer burn, okay to eat. Yes. Yeah. It's a little bit of a bummer, but yes. It's not yeah. ideal, but I mean, you got to work I mean, with what you got. Yeah, you yeah. got to, if you want ice cream and you've got it in your freezer, <laughs> what kind yeah. of fucking monster are you that you're like, mm, no, freezer burn, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Although if you're looking for a reason to eat healthy, that can be a good excuse to like exert some self-control. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I always think like you should be able to have everything that you want whenever you want as long as you don't hurt yourself. That's a great, uh, that's I, okay. like, you know I, I mean? like, that's a. Whatever you want, whenever you want, do just don't hurt yourself. That's a great way to do you're it. You're good. Uh, all right, final one. Ice cream in the winter, yes or no? Yeah, baby! Yeah. The easy oh, yes. Come on! Amelia, what? Come on. Come on. <laughs> but particularly great with like a warm piece of pie and the ice cream on top. Oh my goodness. That's a great call. Right? What the a mix treat. of the mix of hot and cold. Oh, that hot crust and then the melty, melty. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, a song mm. of fire and ice. That's what that's, I, that's right. how I like it. That's, that's right. what I that's what I like it's about. It's a menu it. item right there. A song of fire and ice. <laughs> uh hey, uh we'll that review was... that at the fucking when we go to the fucking stupid Game of Thrones restaurant by Are episode six hundred. Are you gonna go? I mean, if I don't know if it exists, I would but come if, back for that. That it exists, of course it exists. The fucking the, is it really? Yeah, it's called Medieval Times. Oh. <laughs> Sadly, we have gone. We to have medieval times. we have yeah. reviewed Medieval I'm Times. Not only not only have we gone that. to Medieval Times, we've gone to the Pirates Dinner Adventure. Yes, wow. Pirates Dinner Adventure. Medieval Times, or we're talking about labor, has been on strike for some time. Have they really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, those because they are they're they have some you know pretty unsafe. Uh, working conditions and I guess uh, there's some animal mistreatment was kind of oh, a bummer. No. So, oh God, Jesus. yeah, but it, w- it was a, it is a fantastic show when you see it and those performers should be you know compensated and operated under I safe conditions. I hope they get their shit together hope- with those producers because yeah. that's a fun that's a fun it's a fun it's a fucking blast. Yeah. It's like it's like that's like a kid's dream. You it's go to Medieval Times or Pirates Dinner Adventure. Turkey legs. Oh they're, my god. The fucking, it's there's some crazy. animal mistreatment when I go in there when they get those turkey legs <laughs> go to town. <laughs> Did you go to the Ren Fair when it was here? I, I've been to the Ren Fair before with my ex girlfriend. We went to the Ren Fair, and uh, this is now probably ten years ago. But I, I actually did love it. It was a blast. So much. It was. It was. It was a good Never time. Been. I let. Lo- That's so up your alley. I can't no believe one that. Steal this really? idea, but I really wanted to ha- like do a series where it's like like The Office meets Ren, Ren Fair That's fun. meets like Vanderpump Rules, where there's like a bunch of drama and shit. <laughs> I'm sure that there is. I feel like that's a very I feel and like I that's want, also probably. I, I want to play the character that's like she's got like a weird like accent, and everyone thinks it's real, and she's been doing it for like ten years now, and like. You should talk to that guy about that. Right? Did you do a fake accent for a long time? Oh yeah, all of eighth grade, I talked in a fake voice. All what was of the fake eighth voice? Grade. What was it? Do it, do it, do it, it was, do it. Okay, well I can't really oh do it. Oh my god, I don't know if like, I've ever heard it. Wait, it was let like, me it close was like my a, eyes and just get. I did ready like a for very this. guttural voice. It was kind. Of, I kind of talked like like I was talking like this. It was like me and Rosa. <laughs> it was like yeah, it was like Rosa. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it was like a, like a really like a much deeper, weirder voice. And I just did it like Have in class that? like day one. Oh my God. And, and it got a laugh to... and I just committed to it. I have to tell you That's... this. Yeah. So when I when I auditioned for Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I had been teaching workout classes and I had been screaming at the top of my lungs like teaching these classes. And so I got the audition and I was like, fuck, my voice is fucked. So what I did was drop my voice into a lower register and audition with that voice. Wow. wow. And they liked it. And then when we shot the pilot, my voice was back to normal. So I was like trying to like find it again. Like, yeah. and people on fucking online will be like, she doesn't blah, 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 like voice just does, like isn't good. And, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, motherfucker, I was like trying to make money. And like my voice was <laughs> fucked up and like I did the best I could. But that's why, that's why the voice was like, as, as my voice cracks right now, that's why the voice was like that. Yeah, it's like well, a, your it's, voice it's, wasn't yes. like Buffalo Bills and you didn't do it <laughs> for a full year in eighth grade. You must have had people think that was your real voice though. People who just still seen the show. think it's the real voice. Yeah. People, people were like, People, for the first couple seasons of Brooklyn, I remember people would meet me and they would get like actually mad. They'd be really wow. mad because I'm not that person. Right, sure. And they, were, they felt bamboozled. That's you know? crazy. They felt bamboozled. And I understand because like people are so used to reality TV that they, yeah. want, they want the characters that they see on TV to, to be, be that real. way in yeah. real, real life. Those fools, yeah. 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 I, I, uh, by the way, Run Fair, I, I would guess also probably secretly horny, like the ba like bands. Oh secretly. my god! <laughs> Overtly <laughs> horny. Yeah. Overtly, yeah, like those yeah. people like travel around in caravans. Like yeah. they're all fucking each other. Yeah. There's yeah. so there's probably so much drama behind the scenes. Oh. It's a good. It's a great and idea. And those bodices and stuff. Like oh, yeah. everyone's tits are out. And, yeah, like I'm, I'm everyone's fucking, sweating. My elbows going out. <laughs> you know. Um, I. Uh, <laughs> People don't know my voice outside of the the podcast, which is it's really high, <laughs> shockingly high. Yeah, hi, hi. <laughs> hi. I'm a boy king. Little boy, boy. <laughs> Little do they know about me when I get off the podcast. This is what I this sound like—a regular like. old bloke. <laughs> Christ. I would have when I when I was doing this in eighth grade. Because we had, you know, this was before cell phones. We had a landline phone, Thank and God. if someone would call the house and they'd call for me, like I'd pick, I'd pick it up because I talked with my regular voice around my family, and so I'd pick up the phone and be like, "Hello," and they'd do, they'd be like, "Oh, uh, is Nick there?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, one second. And I'd walk away from the phone, and come back, and be like, "Hello." <laughs> hey, Nick, it's Craig from school. I just want to let you know you're not invited to my birthday. <laughs> what happened in ninth grade when people started to figure out that like you hadn't? You've been doing a bit. Or I like just a came thing. back and was like, "Ah, you got me." <laughs> what? I, I just came back. I clean slate. Because I was no, also everyone going. Just gave you the clean slate. Yeah, I went from middle school to high school, and the so buzz new. louder. That's and, true. But also, like, I think everyone was just like, "Yeah, we knew." But a reinvention whatever. of sorts. I had one guy, guy. One is... guy came up to me once, or one of my friends, my friend Andy, came up to me after that. He was like, "Ah, that's a good fit, man. <laughs> You're really committed." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's like that's. That, that guy just was looking to not get fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know that that's what that was. I th That is insane. You did it for a full, a year. full year. You're out of your, you're out of your it's mind. It's real commitment. His family's normal. His family's like funny and nice. So is mine. So is yours. Yeah, that's true. And here we all are. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just like a restaurant value feedback, let's open up the feedback. And today we have an email from KDR. Katie writes... Some very nice stuff. Thank you, Katie, for writing that. And also as a question, uh, what are your favorite <laughs> accidental food uh, food combinations? My boyfriend mm. and brother-in-law, who also love Doughboys, hate when their food touches on a plate, but I don't mind it so much. I love when I get a little Spanish rice in with my enchiladas or a little BBQ sauce with my potato salad. I don't intentionally mix food together, but sometimes it's a nice flavorful combination that changes up the meal for a second. Are there any flavor accident prone plates y'all are on board for? I don't know if that's an accident. I mean, I guess it is. <laughs> Well, I used to be really picky about my food touching when I was a kid, and mm. I completely got over that now. I don't give a shit at all. Like, That's like really I'm fine with everything touching. Yeah, yeah. My grandma used to make me a little, uh, like a bird's nest. Is that what you call that? I think it called it a bird's nest, where you mash potatoes and then put it and then in the middle. peas and gravy in the middle, and I loved that. But that's not accidental. Yeah, accidental. Hmm. Well, look, I've said this before. Oh. You know, you're having like a little honey butter biscuit and some fried chicken. Well, that honey gets on that fried chicken. Oh, a hundred percent. That's, that's no delightful. problem at all. That's, yeah, that's, that's no, delightful. Yeah. I think that's you know what? It's probably with stuff like that, like like uh like syrup. You know, like syrup touching some of your bacon or something like right. that. Right, but I don't okay. want syrup on my scrambled eggs. No, no, God, no, no. But on but on like some sort of breakfast meat, that's fine. What mm. if you had you're like jam 
on a sandwich. I don't want it, Mitch. <laughs> I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> Jesus. Is it that you don't want sweet near your eggs? Yeah, I think I don't love that. Yeah. We just jam on a sandwich. Well, I make a sandwich that's like two, like, like eggo waffles, but they're not egg. They're like paleo waffles. And then I make a-, a That's fun. Then scrambled eggs and then jelly jam on both mm. of the waffles and then a, a chicken sausage patty. And I just eat that. I love Walking that. out the door. That kicks ass. It kicks ass. It reminds me, Mrs. Tufo used to make, she would make a bagel. She'd butter the bagel. Then she put on cream cheese. Mm -hmm. And then she put jelly on jelly top on of that. it. My yeah. dad did that same thing. That's yeah. fucking, I fucking wild. Loved it. I, can't, I would eat that before school. Delight. That's an alpha a move. Delight. Yeah, yeah it's fucking great. Mm. Fuck. Um, you ate that before school? Yeah, I know. Damn. Like, why does my stomach hurt after pee? <laughs> no. <laughs> no connection to why. <laughs> what I was putting in my body and how I felt. Uh, I yeah, like okay, so they, the barbecue sauce. I think the big bar, the big BBQ plate, like a meat and threes or something like that. And anytime you got any sort of sauce, that's that can always intermingle. I feel like mm -hmm. with all the sides, mm -hmm. like I don't mind, I don't mind it on mac and cheese. I don't mind it on potato salad. I don't mind it on coleslaw. Like at any t any place barbecue sauce is, is spraying, I'm fine with that. I'm trying to think of other examples, like accidental. Yeah. Accidental is a hard one. word, yeah. yeah. Like, because it's like that means it's already on your plate, and it just happened to boop, like, yeah. come on over to the, the the thing that you're. But I mean, I try hot sauce on like most things that you wouldn't think that it would be good on, and it's always good. Yeah, you got a favorite hot sauce? Frank's. Your Frank's, interesting. I really like Frank's. I don't get it all the time because yeah. it's got like a lot of stuff in it that's not. You know so what? Hot that's so a great flavor. answer. Frank's is great. It's a classic. It's really you know good. I mean? And then I like the Ninja Squirrel Sriracha because it's got like coconut. Oh, wow. Ooh, okay. So it's like thick. It's kind of like one. creamy. I like it's that. It's really good. It's really good. I think for me, you know what? A lot of times I get like salad dressing like on a plate and then mm. maybe I get my crust on it or you know oh, what I mean? Salad like, dressing on bread is a delight. Yeah. yeah like yeah, like, like a, I feel like like some ranchy or Italian or creamy Italian getting on yeah. some of the other stuff. It get, maybe it mixes in with my rice a little bit. I'm yeah, fine with that. Yeah. That doesn't bother me at all. That's that's a fun time. The answer is everything. Like we're fine yeah. with whatever. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm it not usually one of those. Out. Yeah. Not Put it in a bowl. Mix it around. Put it on yeah. the floor for me for God's that's sakes. Fine. I'll eat it. fine. It's fine. <laughs> If you out there have a question or comment about the world of chain restaurants, you can email us at doughboyspodcast at gmail.com. Look at that. You've been leaning on You've that You've been leaning on the, the stand. Ow. Ah, uh, in the episode. <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> or leave us a voicemail, 830-GOTO. That's 830-463-6844. And to get the Doughboys Double, our weekly bonus episode, you can join the Golden or Platinum Plate Club at patreon.com slash doughboys. Stephanie Beaches, thank you so much for being thank here. What an absolute pleasure. delight. Thank you for we apologize so much your time. for being here. Yeah, sorry. Staying, sorry for sorry, doing Very that. sorry, but thank you. Not at all. You're cool as hell. You're funny in every project, including, you know, whatever you do next. Uh, and uh, and <laughs> hypothetically, a phenomenal actor and 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 uh, and a very generous and kind uh, person. So thank you. I mean that sincerely. You were you were very you were you. Were, I, I was I've been singing your praises. You were you were so great to to work with. So uh, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, an odd time to plug things. Do you have anything you want to direct people uh, towards, social know, media or anything? Well, I'll say this. If this episode comes out and our union, our union SAG also mm. joins the WGA in the strike effort, I think it's valid and I hope it will be fruitful. I think our industry is changing a lot. Um, and for those of you that might listen to this that are outside of our industries, um, just know that like we really want to keep storytelling, the heart of storytelling and what you think you like about storytelling, which is like it's humanity and it's it, the thing that makes you feel connected to people. Like even this podcast is a great example of it. it's like a bunch of people sitting around talking and you listen to it and you feel like, I know these people, I don't feel alone. My weird shit isn't that weird. <laughs> Their sense of humor is just like mine. There's no, there's nothing that can create that other than human beings. And so human beings have to be compensated for their abilities and their their craft and their work mm -hmm. in a way that's fair and protects us as the world shifts into uh, an, another era. Wow. An unknown, well yeah. yeah. That you, that's, yeah, very well said. That's and also, you on. know, if you have a little extra money, you could donate to Planned Parenthood or uh, the Trevor Project. Both of those are great organizations that help a lot of people. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Well, there you go. Well, hey, that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys. Until next time, for the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell, I'm Nick Weiger. Happy eating. See ya.
<laughs> want to dress like the Doughboys? Of course you don't. But you will want to wear our all-new Doughboys merch. Check out our completely revamped merch line in partnership with Kinship Goods. We've got high-quality shirts, hats, aprons, totes, and much more to come. Wow! Only at doughboys.kinshipgoods.com. That's K-I-N-S-H-I-P goods.com. Sources for the intro are in the episode description. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>